be able to come out here and bring these matches to the people. You know, it's a great pleasure for us to come out here with you and sponsorship with ENG Productions, Capital Sports Promotion. We've got some great matches coming at the people, and I think they're really going to be surprised. They're going to be entertained. But the biggest thing is, is that fire match. Well, talking about some of the big stars. I tell you, it was a great night, that hot night in Bayamon, Hugo. You had uh, Samoans there, Jimmy Valiant, uh, Dangerous Dan Spivey, Wahoo McDaniel, plus all the local uh, World Wrestling Council wrestlers, Carlos Colon, uh, Hercules Ayala, us, Ricky Santana, Rufus Jones. I tell you, it was a great night. And it was a hot night, and believe me, the main event features a fire match. Hercules Ayala against Carlos Colon, and I know all the wrestlers were out of the dressing room looking at it. It was one of the best nights in professional wrestling. It was a great place to be on that given night. That's right, Hugo. You know, these people out there are going to get a chance to sit down in their homes and see a fire match, and I don't think they've ever seen anything quite like this, and I'm sure after it's over with, you'll never see anything like it again, because only the World Wrestling Council could bring you a match like this. Well, some comments on the World Tag Team match uh, with the New Zealand Sheep Herders. That's right, you know, that was a big test for us that night, that hot night in Bayamon. We got a chance to defend our belts against the New Zealand Sheep Herders, the Los Pastores. And you know, brother, it was a tough match. Bart and I, we trained hard. We were ready for the match. And uh, we, we're enjoying uh, bringing it to you to, uh, on this tape. Well, not only that, great things are, are about to happen right here. We're going to take you immediately to our first match. It's getting hot. A hot night in Bayamon. Here we go, tag team action, hot Saturday night in Bayamon, and there he is, the Boogie Man, already doing his thing here. <laughs> I tell you, you know, you got to really appreciate the Boogie Woogie Man as the individual that he is, super nice individual, and I think the referee just found out he got a good night, hello, kiss from the Boogie Man himself, Jimmy Bay, and how else can you start a, a hot night out in Bayamon with a kiss on the old lips? Yeah, that's right, Barton. Uh, never let it be said to Rufus R. Jones, who's a great friend of ours, would never hesitate to maybe plant one on your kiss or two just to show his appreciation. Well, we're talking about a pair here. Rufus the King Jones and the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Tell you what, Hugo, you know, what a combination to get two guys like the Boogie Woogie Man and the Freight Train himself together in a tag team match against probably one of the biggest, toughest teams in the sport of professional wrestling, and that's the Wild Samoas. You can look at the screen right there and tell what big guys they are. Afa and Sika, the legendary Wild Samoans, over 14 times world tag team champions. You know, Ugo, on paper, this is a, a really good match. It's a great match to be brought to the people right now because, you know, the Samoans are really unpredictable, and it takes a pair like uh, Boogie Woogie and Rufus because they're really unpredictable to take on a pair of guys And like here this. we go, some yes. rope housing right now. The style of Rufus and Boogie Woogie Man stopping right from the beginning. The Wild Samoans who usually attack their opponents, not this time. I think they beat them to the punch, Hugo. You know, you got the shake and the bake and the rock and the roll and everything going right now, and it's all going against the Samoans, and I think uh, they're a little bit surprised by the aggression that's shown right off the bat from Rufus and Boogie. Rufus all over Sika while the Boogie Man was taking care of Alpha. They're booking down right now. They yeah, sure are, Rufus. Or, uh, Hugo, they are Rufus and Valiant. What a great team they are. I I think years ago, maybe, when uh, they were up in the uh, Charlotte area wrestling up there, I think they teamed together a couple of times. Many, many times. Yes, and they were a great tag team. So, really, this is a reunion of sorts here on a hot night in Bayamon. And it's the World Wrestling Council superstars, the best wrestling. I tell you what, Hugo, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Capital Sports Promotion and ENG Productions. That's Fast Eddie, buddy. Thanks a lot for giving us an opportunity to sit down and look at these matches and bring them to the people hey, in their homes. I'm the one that's happy. I usually got to deal with people that are always arguing, like Bobby Joggers or Chicky Star is always upset. This is a night off for me. I'm going to enjoy the matches, and I'm in good company because you guys are peaceful, uh, nice, uh, moderate, uh, tremendous wrestlers, of course, but I'm not going to have a good time today. Yeah, I tell you, we appreciate that, Hugo, and it's really a pleasure for us to be in your presence, too, because your reputation precedes itself, and it's an honor and a pleasure, and we're really looking forward to bringing these great matches to the people out there with you sitting right beside us. And we could certainly verify that this is the World Wrestling Council superstars, the best wrestling around the world, and now... It's the Boogeyman and uh, Alpha in the center of the ring. You could difference Alpha and Sika because Sika's got the lighter hair. Other than that, boy, we're talking about some crazy people. That's two of them. They're there. 
They they look a lot alike too, and uh, I can appreciate that. I know my brother can too because uh, we look an awful lot alike ourselves. So we can appreciate the little strategy or the little advantage that it gives you when you're attacking. Oh, team talking wrestling. about strategy, did we just see a uh, kind of an illegal move by Jimmy? It sure looked like it to me, Hugo. But uh, obviously the damage. The fans was were done. not complaining either. <laughs> That's right, Hugo. You know, the fans down here can appreciate the strategy there with the Boogie Woogie Man just trying to get on top of the Samoan right there. Well, I tell you, he just laid the other Samoan out right there on the apron, Brand went over and just cold-cocked him. But that's the Boogie style. He's taking care of business in the ring like he knows how to do. I feel a lot of pain, and now the referee is trying to keep the action going here and wait till Rufus hits the ring. You think Jimmy is crazy? Whoa! Whoa. I tell you, that, uh, those are two big heads going together right there. And uh, it well knocked one Samoan off the apron there, Ugo. I mean, those are two big guys that just got their heads thrown together. Uh, the boogeyman all over, Alpha. Oh. Face first into the turnbuckle. Here comes Rufus. Well, there's, a, me there's a meeting right, of two hard there, minds Rufus. right there, Ugo. Uh, Samoan's got a hard head, and everybody knows Rufus Jones' head's just as hard, if not harder. Okay, Rufus doing his thing. The king. He is something else in the ring. A lot of movement, and he is all over. Sika, here comes Alpha, and he gets hit. All Double right. shots. I tell you what, Rufus, there he is going at both these guys. You know, Rufus uh, had a little amateur boxing background before he got into sport of professional wrestling, and right there, he's just doing his shake and bake routine. He's got poor chops. He's got spare ribs flying all over the place. He's the king of professional wrestling, no Do doubt about it. Do you know that actually when he goes to the gym to lift weight, that's part of his routine when he's working out. You're right. Well, even when he's doing some jogging, he's doing that. <laughs> there's, there's no question about that. There's, his arms are always moving, and I, I hate to keep repeating myself, shaking and baking, because that's what I refer to it when Rufus is in there doing his thing. You know, it looks like the Samoa's trying to beg off for a little mercy here, Ugo. I think he's had about just about enough of Rufus for the time. They have been hit hard, and we are talking about two top wrestlers, in tag team competition, the Wild Samoans on the field for many years, and Rufus and Jimmy, like we pointed out, they teamed up many, many years around the NWA area, Charlotte, and they did great, defeated a lot of the top teams. Let's see what happens here in this hot Saturday night. Well, there's Rufus Jones doing his uh, little boogaloo right there, getting out of that side headlock held by the Samoans. And, of course, there's a Samoan complaining that he thinks Rufus Jones has some oily substance on his hair. And, of course, we all know that that's not true. You're exactly right, Barry. The, the Samoa seems to be pressing his point. He wants the referee to go check his hair, but he's not getting any satisfaction there. You know what, Ugo? I'm just sitting here wondering, watching Ugo, or watching Rufus and the Samoans and Boogie Valiant. Just how many years of wrestling experience do you think is in that ring right now? A lot of the years, and uh, they held almost all the uh, prestigious titles in that, single competition. That's right, and uh, Samoans were uh, world tag team champions at one time, I believe, up in the WWF. Hey, there's yes. Rufus Jones again, getting out of that side headlock over with the big high 10 to the Boogie Woogie Man. I tell you what, so far it's been all Boogie and the freight train. Uh, a little bit of a conference here. The Wild Samoans in the corner, so far they have not been able to stop the freight train and the Boogie Man. Well, and it's hot side of the night. There's a old fast Eddie there, Hugo. I can pick that hat out of a crowd just about anywhere. Oh, yeah. Where he is, is always trouble. <laughs> a lot of truth to be said about that. Now, Samoan looks like he's getting a little bit of advantage over Rufus there. Tell you, you can't, oh, there's, uh, a hot shot. there's a hot shot here on a hot Saturday night. You can't sell the Samoan short, Hugo. They're, he uh, mean streak by Alpha yes. all over Rufus, but he's fighting back. All right. Come on, Rufus. Come on, Rufus. See, Hugo. Rufus Joe. Oh, that was a big... Well, I don't know. It looked like another possible questionable blow there. Yes, I didn't really well, get to be shot. fair, the boogeyman was the first man to uh, use an illegal shot like that, and I think it's payback, and the fans do not appreciate it right now, and it's trouble for Rufus right here. Oh, here yeah. we go. Well, Rufus managed to duck out of that just a little bit, and we got the Samoans in there trying to do a little double team tactic there. And uh, they have no, you know, you've got to count a five to get out of the ring in a tag team match, or you should be disqualified. And I tell you, they pushed it to the limit that time. The nurse freight train with the big African suit bone to the jaw. And he nailed the Samoan, but the tag, tag oh, is made yeah. here. 
Man, here comes Jimmy. Man. Whoa, oh, right there. The oh, yeah. Man in the rain, going crazy. He's got the Samoan going. He's seen Rufus Jones take enough punishment, and he's tired of the tactics of the Samoans, and he's getting to them right now, Hugo. He is all over the Samoan here. Referee, it's counting here. Jimmy, not listening to the referee. Hugo, do you think the Samoan style's uh, been a little, or the style of Rufus and Boogie Woogie has uh, confused the been, Samoans yes. a little bit here? Very wild style of uh, Jimmy and Rufus. I don't think the Samoans ever expected to find this kind of attitude from Rufus and the Boogeyman. I'll tell you what, the Boogie Woogie Man can brawl with the best of them, Ugo. We've seen him go from pillar to post too many times. When he has to have something done, if he has to take care of something in the ring, in this case it's the Samoans, he does whatever he has to to do it. Okay, Rufus all over now on Sika. But he's maybe looking the, out the, the people. wishbone here. <laughs> Looks, oh. oh, oh. Uh, people really enjoyed that one. We're Ugo. talking about a mean streak tonight here. Rufus, you know, something happens on anniversaries of the capital sports. We see a lot of strange things happening. And Rufus, a mean streak on him on Saturday night here. Hey, it's Samoan uh, right there for the karate thrust to the throat. Obviously, the referee didn't see that. I guarantee you that'll slow you down anytime. Here's the other Samoan coming in the ring, and they're getting a little uh, double team action him on the freight train. And uh, Rufus needs to get a tag over there to boogie. Check those shots. Look at the punches there. coming in on Rufus. Rufus is taking a lot of punishment right there. The referee's uh, busy with uh, Jimmy Valiant trying to get him back in the corner, and they're really getting some damage done. And Rufus now suffering a lot of pain. And when the Samoans get going, not too many teams are able to stop them because they are mean and they don't get tired. Well, you can just see the tactic right there, Hugo. You got the Samoan distracting the referee so his partner in the corner can do a damage. You know when you get in a situation like this in a tag team match, it's two against one, and there was a vicious blow once again from the Samoan, but Rufus can't go anywhere because you got one holding him and the other guy beating him. Took all air out of the body of Rufus. The yeah, Samoans are really starting to roll now, Hugo. Getting their double teaming in and uh, breaking rules oh, as only they big, can. Big thumb to the throat right there. Rufus is uh, Rufus in a lot of trouble right now. Rufus! All right. One Rufus, good shot on, Rufus. by Rufus. Yeah, the people he are stopped off right. out there for a little while. Now he's coming back. Yeah. There he goes, oh, 20 legs. There, there is. There's a tag to Jimmy Valiant. He needed that, Hugo. Look out. Here comes the boogeyman. Boom. Whoa. All over. There's someone. Here comes the other one. Jimmy, it's all over. Oh, he's he, taking he might get the referee to move out of the way. Yeah, he's going crazy right now, the Boogie Woogie yeah. Man. Bam, there's two big Samoas. That's a big collision right there, and the Boogie Woogie Man is rocking and rolling right, right Things now. are hot in Bam on tonight. Down goes Alpha. He's up for the cover. Two. two. Oh, there's the other Samoan making a save. You got to give credit there, Hugo. You okay. got to do that. In Look out. This is going to be trouble. Four men in the ring. And the referee's not going to be able to control this one. Oh, there's a big headbutt by the freight train, Rufus Jones. That's put down a lot of men. There he is once again going after Samoan. Referee trying to push Rufus out, giving the advantage to the Samoans here. Hey, it's hard to restore order in a match like this. Uh oh, they got both. Oh, the, over the well, top. That's a top, top rope right there. That's the, yeah. Disqualification. Automatic rules in the World Wrestling Council. And desperation moving a part of the wild Samoans as they were overpowered from the beginning oh, no by the about team about of that. Jimmy, the Boogie Woogie Man Ballet and Rufus, the King Jones and the Wild Samoans are not happy about this. Yeah, Nevertheless, they're going wild. the winners are Jimmy, the Boogie Woogie Man, and Rufus R. Jones, and the party has just begun. It is hot Saturday oh, night in Bayamon. Let's take it out to the next match. Our second match is uh, a really a battle that's going to really decide a conflict, probably one of the biggest, hottest rivalries going in the World Wrestling Council at this particular time for the Puerto Rican Heavyweight Championship, Ricky Santana against Mr. Pogo, and Hugo, these guys really went after it there for a while. Oh, you know, that's right, Bart. Uh, it's like you say, they've been battling all over the island, and it came down to this night, anniversary, 1988, here in a hot night in Bayamon to decide once and for all who is going to be the Puerto Rican heavyweight championship. Well, Pogo's manager, El Profe, had claimed that uh, 
Ricky Santana was not a worthy champion, and on the night of the anniversary 88, that there will be a new crowning of a new champion, and they have gone at it even before the referee was ready to do the check-in on both opponents. Well, it's obviously, Hugo, Ricky Santana is incensed and was incensed by those comments made by El Profi saying he's not a worthy champion, and he's letting that Latin blood boil right now, and he's showing just exactly what he's made of. Look at him going recklessly after Mr. Pogo. He's not going to finish until he's got everything done that he wants to do to this guy. He is all over, Mr. Pogo. Yeah, I think Mr. Pogo was caught a little bit off guard, too. Uh, Hugo, there's Ricky going for a big body slam on Mr. Pogo. Uh, he's, uh, Ricky's just uh, totally incensed at this stage of the game. He wants to damage ooh, ooh. Mr. Pogo. Oh, I, what a vicious move that was. Mr. Pogo doesn't know whether he's coming or going. A lot of hate involved here. Not only the prestige of the championship, but it's a personal feud between Santana and Pogo. And this is the night, the anniversary 88, hot Saturday night in Puerto Rico. And Ricky Santana wants to prove to all the fans here and all the fans that will be watching this all over the world who is the real champion of the Puerto Rican island. Well, you know, right now, uh, Ricky Santana is trying to be held back a little bit by Ricky Vargas, the referee. He's having a hard time doing it because he wants Pogo bad. And I guarantee you, Profi is not happy with this situation right now. Okay, here, Ricky must be careful at all times uh, because of, of the expertise of Pogo and the martial arts and that ever Ooh. deadly cobra. And he just got him right there with a big vicious chop that came out of nowhere right to Santana's throat. Looks like Mr. Pogo got a little bit of uh, wise counseling on the outside of the ring there from El Profi. I think that was a smart move. How hard part. does Pogo hit? You've been in the ring with this man. You know that. Tell you what, Hugo, we uh, wrestled Mr. Pogo a lot of times all through our travels out in Kansas City in the Midwest. And then we came down here to Puerto Rico. We managed to beat him and Kendo Nagasaki to win the World Wrestling Council World Tag Team titles when we first came to this great island. But I tell you, his kicks are definitely the type of kicks that can do a lot of damage because he knows where to kick you and he knows how to kick you. And really, having to go out and wrestle this guy is not a fun time. There is no mercy towards his opponents. I could tell you that much. You know, that's just uh, well, the way it is in the World Wrestling Council, Hugo. This is one of the toughest. And look at that. He threw him right there in the barricade around the people right there. Like I was saying, World Wrestling Council, you got to be at your best at all times because uh, this is one of the toughest places in the world to try to get a championship and even just get out in the ring and wrestle. Well, Pogo, uh, for a few seconds, had the championship in his hands. Maybe he's a little bit overconfident here. This could uh, be trouble for him because Santana is not a quitter. And like you said before, his Latin blood. And Pogo, if, okay, here we go. Santana. He's turning now. tables on him again right here. Hey, this is exactly what you have to do, Hugo, when you got a guy like Mr. Pogo, because he likes to take it outside the ring. He likes to try to do his damage outside the oh, ring. And there, he did, Ricky Santana just wrapped that leg around that turnbuckle post, and I guarantee you, it does the knee absolutely no good. How does it feel when you are in the dressing room getting ready for this hot night? in Bayamon. What was that? What, what was uh, your experience on that on that given night? Well, I tell you, Hugo, you know, the, to be a part of this great night was one of the biggest moments in our career. And uh, as we'll see uh, in the, later on in the tape, we wrestled the sheep herders that night, and we were just... Uh, the wrestlers I, feel nervous you know, uh, prior we, to we were nervous, a big confrontation like and, this? Uh, yeah, we were nervous. Uh, you always want to be nervous when you go out there, and particularly that night for us and here with Ricky against Pogo. It's for a championship. And you know that's on the line. There's a lot of money involved, a lot of prestige involved, and you just got to dig down in yourself and, and come up with what it takes, and in our case, and for both of us, and to go out there and do what you can do and win. It comes around once a year, and it's called the Hot Nine in Puerto Rico, this time in Bayamon, anniversary 1988. And it was a great night. Tell you what, right now, Ricky Santana is just going to town on Mr. Pogo. He was pounding him with his fist, throwing the head into the turnbuckle, and there's a shot into the opposite turnbuckle. Oh, oh Pogo chin moved out first. Of way. Chin first into the top turnbuckle. I tell you, he didn't expect that Whoa. at all. Go. Ricky Santana's in a lot of trouble right now. Look at Pogo. He's still a little weary after that beating he just took, but I guarantee he's got a lot of stamina, and now he sees his opportunity to really do some damage on Ricky, and I know Pogo well enough that he will take advantage of that. Well, Ricky Santana taking a big gamble, and Pogo now, he oh, misses a shot. right there. Oh, beautiful oh, move right. here. Turn around, right. referee. Oh, I think, I think Profe, distracting the referee a little bit here, might have saved, well, could have had been a, two more seconds on that 
uh, attempted pinfall by Santana. The champion in trouble, and Pogo, as the time progresses in the match, he tends to get meaner and meaner. That's the advantage of having a manager out there on the outside of the ring, too. Go, you were absolutely right. He really had him down for three seconds. Oh, the referee, oh, there he's really laid him in now. And the referee was distracted by the manager, and that's definitely an advantage. Plus, he's always, he's always picking on uh, racial comments, always insulting uh, Santana's uh, roots, and that has to kind of distract you when you hear a boss on the background insulting your people, your race, and Prophet would do that. He, I mean, he will do whatever he has to do to make one of his wrestlers win a match, especially this Puerto Rican heavyweight title match. That's right. When everything's on the line, Hugo, you know, you got to give a little credit where credit is due. I'm not uh, going along with Profi's uh, way of thinking whatsoever, but he has oh. to do, oh, there's a big spin kick, and I can guarantee you, Ricky Santana is seeing stars right now because that spin kick is definitely in the jaw area, and I tell you, I can speak from experience. He chipped four of my teeth one time with that spin kick. Wow. Well, a lot of new young wrestlers that are trying to make a name for themselves in the world of professional wrestling will have uh, some tough times with Pogo if they face him because he loves to get the new guys in professional wrestling and destroy them, break their bones, their, their necks. I mean, he is mean. Hey, don't, uh, don't sell Pogo short, Ugo. He's a ruthless competitor, and he goes out there and does what he feels he has to do to win a match. Uh, even if you don't agree with his methods or not, I think the results speak for itself. And he does love to get young, uh, inexperienced wrestlers out there and try to show them a little bit of what he's made of. And usually that ends up, like you say, with hospitalization. Okay, an oriental nerve hold here, well applied. Well, you can see the, the psychology here, the strategy of Pogo is very easy to see, Hugo. He wear, he's worn Ricky Santana down with the karate kicks and the karate thrust, and when he's got him weak and in bad shape like he does now, he puts on that nerve hold, and what that does is not only intensify the pain, but it uh, kind of takes a little bit of uh, oxygen out of you, too. Well, the champion in a lot of difficulties here as a challenger Thanks. has paralyzed him. Uh, he's coming up now, uh, Ugo, uh, the Ricky Santana. What this, about the fan support? Uh, Ricky's got the support of the fans. You can hear him in the background there getting behind him. But Ricky was in the best shape maybe of his career and was really up for this match at Hot Night, Saturday night in September, anniversary 88 in Bayamon. And he was ready. Oh, oh, big that shot. came out of nowhere. Paco caught him as he was coming in. Vicious karate trust hey, chopping. Out, though. Let me Santana is lucky to be able to kick out on that one. I'll tell you what, you got to give him credit gone. to him. Oh, yeah, he was definitely, he could have just laid there if he wanted to go and let the count of three. But Ricky Santana's got too much pride, and he's not going to go down as easily as Mr. Pogo thought he was going to. And I think it's a credit to Ricky Santana. Well, Pogo all over Santana, his manager, the professor, happy outside ring. Yeah, Profi loves it when his men are out there beating you up and getting you down. And it's like you say, you know, he's constantly racially slurring you. Oh, Pogo's going to the middle rope here. Oh! Hey, I don't play. And we all know how much that hurt. I that think hurts. that uh, might have raised uh, Mr. Pogo's voice up a couple octaves, don't you, Hugo? Whoa! I'll tell you what, I think uh, any of the men out there in the he could have probably had sang an opera right there. Exactly. I think we can all relate to how that feels. Ricky Santana was a desperation move to get those knees up, but it looks like he's getting a little bit of life left in him. And now that Latin blood's boiling. He's beating that chest, and you know when that happened, he's ready to start going to town. And oh, Pogo's Pogo. trying to run, but he didn't let him get out of the ring. No running this time. As the oh, champion, big attacks. elbow off the ropes there for Santana. He's going after Mr. Pogo now. He's all over oh, Pogo. Oh, kicks in. The That's champion it, all over. Oh, Pogo. one count there. Uh-oh. He's looking out to people who go, he knows what they want. Knuckle City right now, courtesy hey, of Santana. City right there in the target, Mr. Pogo's head, and that's an Ooh. awful head, too. Look at him, he's just going crazy, Hugo. He's going berserk. He's not going to let Mr. Pogo beat him for that Puerto Rican. And now he wants, he wants to go after the manager. That could be a mistake. He has to it's, concentrate it's... on the challenger. Oh, another big right hand right there. Oh, oh, oh. there's that spin that's what kick makes again. It so dangerous because when you think you got him, there we have it. Almost a three count. Tell you what, credit Ricky profit. Santana. Did you see that profi outside? He thought he had him. Yeah, right he there. thought he had it built right oh. there. Oh. Tell you, a big half power slam right there. I guarantee you, Ugo, that jars your kidneys, your backbone, everything. And here's oh. Pogo up on that second rope. All oh. right, he moves out of the way. Tell you what a match this has been. Hey, back and, back forth. and forth. Oh, what a, a classical encounter of a tremendous 
proud champion and a very dangerous challenger and that would like to please his manager by becoming the champion in this hot Saturday night in Bayamon. So he couldn't quite get the pinfall there, so he gets him up. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Ricky now he's singling going to for victory, and we all know what's coming up here. Tell you, when he puts this on him, they don't get up dangerous after this. Dangerous move. Yeah, it's a high-risk move oh. all the way. Oh. oh. Tell you what, Ugo, a high-risk move right there. The guy oh, moves wait a minute. That's a signal Bogo for the Cobra. For the Cobra Hall. It's spelled Strabo for the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a... You don't want to be putting don't that hole. Don't let him get it, Ricky. Don't let Come him on, get it, fight it, it baby. Fight it. And the kids that are watching this at home right now, please do never attempt to use any of these holes because they are deadly. This one okay, is very that's dangerous. It. That's it. Come on, Ricky. See, he didn't quite let him get that Cobra. Oh, oh. Pogo, Pogo has been at his best. If Ricky has been in his best shape of his career, we we have to give Pogo credit. He's been there. Tell you what, you got to credit the World Wrestling Council too, Hugo, because this just goes to show what kind of matches, what kinds of uh, matches that go on down here in the World oh. Wrestling Council. Big vertical suplex, and Pogo is not an easy man to suplex. Okay, he goes for the pinfall there, but not enough for the three count. Both men are fighting with everything oh. they got right now, Hugo. They're down to desperation. One for all the marbles. Side oh, there he goes up. outside. Uh-oh. A very dangerous place to be when El Profi is wandering around. Hugo. Okay, Pogo. Now, waiting for the champion to get back in the ring. Refer is counting. To obtain the championship, you must pin the champion oh, or make right him there. surrender. Yeah, both men just have given it their all. And you can tell they're fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, giving it everything they got down to the last bit to win this match, Hugo. Look out, Ricky. Oh, oh what a, almost tackle. like a sumo tackle. I tell you, you know, Pogo, look at him right now. He I has done almost everything hey, right. He thinks, he, he thinks he's got it right now because he got Ricky Santana down. Oh, oh look, look at that. that. Flip on this the top could be it, Hugo. That's it. Yes. Oh. Oh, hey, great, great. great match, Successful great match. pinfall. The colors in here at yeah. Bayamon has erupted. It's a uh, raptors are shaking right now. Their Ugo. favorite champion has successfully defeated Pogo in a tough encounter. He still holds the Puerto Rico's heavyweight yeah, championship. Look oh, out. No. Cheap shot time. I tell you, this is a mark of Mr. Pogo. There he goes. He's already lost a match. Oh, oh big double, double shot. shot coming off the ropes, brother. It's not necessary. Now he's oh, in there. goes that Cobra. Oh, Hey, Ricky was in trouble right there, Ugo. Oh, this means trouble, trouble here. The match is officially over. Pogo has nothing to lose now because he already lost the match. Dang. So he don't have to worry about being disqualified. Dang, what disgusts me is there's El Prof. Look, look at there the manager. Direction. Yeah, distracting the referee and all that's doing is causing more harm on Ricky Santana. And this is a serious situation right here. And Santana. The fans are certainly showing their uh, despicability towards that act, too. They're pelting the ring with everything, Ugo. Dang, unnecessary Dang. right there, Prof. He, he just thought it'd be fine and thrown out of the ring right there. Ricky Vargas Benitez. Okay, we, that's, that's where the bad things yeah, came into the ring. Tell you what, Hugo, it's hard to uh, explain to the people that weren't okay. there the feeling of the hatred right now. Okay, you were in the ring. You have faced Pogo before. You know the effects of the Cobra. Yet he left the ring and all that uh, saliva and uh, foam coming out of the, of the mouth of, uh, of, of Santana, almost ready to throw up. And you've been there before. How did it feel to see one of your buddies, one of your good friends, uh, gone through that? Because when when a hold is applied like that, you never know if it's going to cause permanent uh, injury. Well, that's the key right there, Hugo. You know, that's a very dangerous hold. And when you see somebody in a situation like this, Ricky with his foam coming out of his mouth, is something seriously wrong here? And, uh, you know, it's obvious by the look on our faces right there. We're concerned about it. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those hazards that could possibly happen to you every night you step into the room. Ring, something like this can happen to you, and it's just a feeling that's sometimes hard to live with. Yeah, that's right, Hugo. And there's Ricky foaming at the mouth from the at Cobra being applied unnecessarily uh, by Mr. Pogo. And, uh, you know, we were just, we really didn't know what to do because Ricky was really in a bad way. And they, here they are, they're bringing out the stretchers. And we we're just trying to comfort him a little bit. But uh, we were really concerned for his health right there. Well, to tell the fans what happened afterwards, he was taken into the medical. Uh, facilities where he was kept under doctor's uh, care for over an hour till finally he reacted. Fans, we're going to take you now to another great match of this hot Saturday night in Bayamon.
Okay, here we go. Here we go the third match on this great video. We got the New Zealand Sheep Herders against the Sensational Batten Twins, and I can honestly tell you, we were really up for this match. You know, you're right, Bart. Uh, this was one of the biggest matches of our career up to this point. Uh, to be in front of this great anniversary crowd for 88 and a hot night in Bayamon against maybe one of the toughest tag teams in the whole world, the New England Sheep Herders. We were sky high, Hugo. New Zealand Sheep Herders are great history and championship uh, glories as they were champions in over 34 countries and always represented uh, their country. Even though that flag was used on many occasions to injure a lot of opponents, what, what was the feeling when you knew you were against one of the top teams in professional wrestling, men that have defeated a lot of top uh, uh, teams in the world, and not only that, but you know that at any given point, Butch or Luke Williams could do something to permanently hurt you. Well, Hugo, I'm glad you brought that up, because I'd like to know and ask you a question. Why does a promotion bring in a team like the New Zealand Sheep Herders to wrestle the Sensational Batten Twins when everybody knows what kind of reputation the Sheep Herders have? We had to put our titles on the line. There were a lot of other teams that could have and should have got a title shot, but yet the promotion decided to bring these two animals in here to come after us. I don't understand that. Well, uh, it could be that the fact that uh, you have defeated so many top teams that they wanted uh, to show the people how great the World Wrestling Council uh, champions are, and uh, when you face the Sheep Herders, you are against the best. That's right, Hugo. I hate to, I agree with you, and I hate to disagree with my brother, but... No, wait, uh, wait, wait a minute. You hate to disagree with who? With my brother. I, you know, I disagree with his point of view right there. I think I agree with you. This was a great test for us. I mean, the people know what the New Zealand sheep herders stand for. They know what they expect when they see the New England sheep herders in the ring. And, uh, you know, that just comes with the territory, Bart, and you know that. So, uh, really, I think this was a great test for us because we, uh, we could show the people of the whole world right here that we are as good as any tag team anywhere by beating these guys. I'm a little bit confused because I thought that uh, the twins uh, always uh, think alike and they got the same taste for well, everything. Let me tell you something right now. These guys, as far as I'm concerned, were a hit squad brought in by somebody, probably somebody in the promotion. I don't know. Maybe they thought that uh, we were getting a little bit better than they wanted us to be. I don't know what the situation was, but as far as I'm concerned, deep down underlying it's conspiracy. Regardless of what Brad says, regardless of what you say, there's more to this than the Misty Eye. Oh my goodness, these are serious accusations here. Uh, and I, I have to stop here a second to, to let the, uh, the fans know that we are not responsible for the comments uh, that were just made. Uh, here, maybe you should identify the name on one of the bathrooms so we know uh, who just said that because you guys look alike. I don't know who, who's who here. Well, right now, Hugo, I'm not going to uh, register that comment right there. It's Bart that said it. But here were the sheep herds. They finally attacked us when we came in the ring. There's the big high five. The sensational Batten twins, the crazy train of professional wrestling, are doing what they do best, regardless of the hit people that the promotion brought in. Well, Bart, you do have to admit that uh, even you might call them hit people, but I'm telling you, they're top caliber competition, and what we did right there is we just outsmarted them right there. I yeah. mean, these guys are smart I, guys. I, I agree with you. Yeah. If you are the best, you have to wrestle with the best. And this is Brad oh, talking I'm not, now. Yeah, I'm not goes. saying this isn't, uh, they're not a great team. Don't get me wrong here. They're, everybody knows they're a great team. I don't think you guys understand where I'm coming from. Why this particular team? Why not bring in somebody else that don't have the reputation of brawling like these guys? I mean, I mean that's what I don't understand. Yeah, well, that's like uh, getting uh, a, a quick escapade from the top teams. Uh, I think just like in professional football where uh, division leaders play each other on playoffs and in Super Bowls, I think uh, pulling the world tag tactic titles signify that you have to fight or wrestle the number one challengers. And here is Luke Williams getting some tremendous shots here. Tell you, we were really psyched up for this match right there. And really, well, Who's in the ring right now? Well, it's me in the ring, Hugo Bart. Uh, this is Brad on this end here, and all I want to say is, uh, you know, here uh, they got Bart there. That was sneaky right there. But Bart, you know, this was a big night for not only us, but for the World Wrestling Council and Anniversary 88. And what a better team could they have put us against than the uh, Sheep Herders from New Zealand to show the people of the world that this is where it's all happening. Well, you know, Brad, Again, I got to disagree with you and Ugo. You know, everybody know. Oh, there it is. I remember that clothesline right there because that nearly took my head off and came out of nowhere. But you know, 
I'm not saying these guys aren't a great team. I'm saying we should be considered a good team, too, and why should we be tested with a team like that when there's other teams out there that would like a shot at those belts? I'm confused here. I always thought twins uh, think alike, they dress alike, and and uh, I, I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, let's get back to the action here as uh, the tank uh, has been confused here. Who's in the ring right now? That's me again, Hugo, just slipping and sliding and drop kicking and the sheep hers. And there's those two big noggins together right there. And I'll tell you what, we had them going right there. I don't think the people expected this from the Sensational Batten Twins. I don't think the promotion expected this from the Sensational Batten Twins. But just goes to show you that we're as good as we think we are. And that, Bart, I, I don't know about that. I just know that they brought a team like this down here for this particular night. Uh, I think they had confidence in us that we could beat these guys. Uh, world Wrestling Council doesn't want a representative like the Los Pastores to have their world tag team belts. They want somebody like us. And that's exactly what the point was to have us sign a match with these guys to prove that we are the best. And we always uh, invite uh, uh, all the wrestlers from all the other alliances, including the NWA, AWA, and the WWF to participate. If, if you think you're good, Ugo, well, I the think you're, I think you're influencing my brother. I don't want I don't appreciate it at all, buddy. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, Ugo, I, don't, I, 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 I wouldn't worry ulcer, about that. My ulcer is starting to act up a little bit uh, here. I, I wouldn't get too upset over it, Ugo. I mean, you know, we have a difference of opinion here, but one thing we oh, do we agree on. We have a good on. time here. Now, yeah. now I'm in the middle of, uh, uh, I don't know, I, you know. Well, let's talk about the match right here. We're all tag team towels on the line, hot Saturday night, and this is crazy. Look, Williams. Who's in the ring right now with Look, Williams? Well, that's Brad, Ugo. And, you know, there, there they go to their tactics, the eye gouging, the eye ripping. Oh, they were good, good move right there, leapfrog. Oh. Into the midsection, I mean, you know. So you took a knee, a knee from him, and then you were able to counterattack with the same maneuver. Good There's drop a big kick. drop kick right there. I tell you, you know, Ugo, I think this was a showcase for the sensational Batten Twins. There's a lot of people out there that didn't think we could do what we're doing right now on this screen, and everybody's homes with the big fat guy sitting there drinking a beer. He's watching exactly what the sensational Batten Twins wait, are wait, made wait, of. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We, sh we should not uh, talk like that because there's, there's good people watching us right now. And uh, I don't think, uh, you know, I'm kind of taking personal because I, I've got a kind of a beer belly myself. You know? Well, Hugo, if the shoe fits where it, I'm going to have to, and this is Brad speaking now, I have to, you know, I can't disagree with what my brother's saying because we are showing the people right here that we are as good as any tag team in the world today. Oh, my God. This, I, I don't understand this. Well, I don't I'll tell you, understand right now, this. The New Zealand sheep herders right now, Hugo, getting back to the match, have really got things going right now. Oh, there went for the big headbutt. We moved out of the way, and there's a drop kick. And I guarantee you, he wasn't expecting that. The uh, sheep herders are out back outside the ring. We're celebrating. We're fired up. And this was a big night for the sensational Batten Twins, regardless of what kind of scandal or controversy you or the promotion wanted to throw at us. Well, I, I'm not involved in any con conspiracy or anything. We just want to show the people around the world the best wrestling. And, and right now, we have with us uh, 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 already a tough uh, match here. And it's, it's getting even uh, hotter and better. Anyway, here we go. Good move by the Batten Twins, double teaming on the Sheep Herders. They're using the same strategy as the Sheep Herders uh, have done throughout all those years where they held so many championships. That's right, Hugo. You know, we studied a lot of film and it saw a lot of tapes and matches of the Sheep Herders before we uh, came out to this night to wrestle these guys. So we knew pretty much what was going on with them and how they uh, would wrestle in a match and the tactics they would use. Where they, on the other hand, I don't think uh, there's that much tape out on us, on our wrestling strategy. Oh, are you skill. kidding? And, there's uh, plenty of tapes on you guys. Well, I, I, don't think love these, your matches. I don't think these guys saw them because uh, I think we had them off guard. We were really fired up for this match. And, uh, you know, we were really psyched up and here we are we're going after him oh, again look, oh look at that from the floor there i remember that butch miller grabbing one of the boots of the batten twins and now luke williams the crazy one all over one of the what, batten twins i here. tell you what ugo these guys are vicious they're tenacious they're rough they're tough they're brawlers they're street fighters look oh. at that using the belt, our belt that we have on the line right there to try to do some extra damage on us. I mean, these guys That's are awful. obviously... That's awful. Hey, they're obviously five cards short of a full deck. You know what I mean? Yeah, no question about it. 
But there again, Bar, you know, this is a good chance for us to prove to everybody that we are just as tough and just as rough as these guys are. And uh, it was a good test for us. Why, why do we have to put our, excuse me, why do we have to put our life on the line with these guys? Why can't oh, we there's a big top well, rope there. Well, you are there. professional wrestlers. You are one of the top teams in the world. You currently have uh, recovered the world so, tag team uh, belts. And uh, you should know that this is it. This is the, the big leagues of professional wrestling. Illegal tactics by... Butch Miller, the tank, using the belt again on the back of the head on one of the Batman twins, and the fans are really upset about it. I'll tell you, not as upset as I was, Ugo. I'm the one sitting there getting my head beat in by the belt. I'm getting it thrown into the table. That uh, ring was up on some kind of platform about a uh, foot off the floor. I fell over that. I've got knees. I've got everything else. Well, Why do you, I have you, to endure Are you complaining that kind of... about the floor platform now, too? Because well, we did that to make sure that everybody in the arena was able to see all the action because this is hot Saturday night once a year every year in Puerto Rico well you know I, I don't uh, as far as what the people want to go at this particular stage of the game Hugo I'm not that concerned about that hey, I'm concerned about our wait a minute Bart listen to these people out here they're they're behind us the whole time they I think sometimes they feel the pain we feel and they can relate to what's going on with us in there I mean we're family and most everybody out there is family and they're they're with us all the way look I at all the cheap you, look at all the cheap shots there why I have to go through that? Why should you have to go through that? The people are so uh, open-minded and so resentful or not resentful, so respectful uh, of our talents. Well, well, Why do that? They were complaining to the referee because you were getting hurt there. Yeah, well, then what's the referee doing, Hugo? Look at him. Well, uh, Solid Scarenta, the referee was having a lot of uh, trouble trying to control this. Two crazy wrestlers from New Zealand. Well, there's Fast Eddie. He could have, you know, Eddie, hey, he could have helped me right there, get me back into the ring. Uh, well, that's illegal. You, you should not have any help from... Uh, uh, other people. Oh, then it's legal for him to throw me outside the ring and uh, no. hit me in the head with the bell? No, no it's not. This, this sounds there? to me like a deja vu here. I'm starting to feel like I'm back with uh, Bobby Jaggers here. Hey. What's happening, guys? I'm, you know, I'm one of your buddies. Well, what's huh? happening is I just had a sunset flip on one of the sheep herders, and I had him pinned, and the referee's over there not doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he wasn't counting the guy, and we had him right there, at least for a while. Now they're going back to beat me up again, Hugo. And they do what they do best, double team, and they make those quick tacks, and look uh -oh. at that knee, the specialty of the house, Butch Miller. You can tell, you can tell by my reaction on the apron there, Hugo, that uh, I've even felt that one. So at this, uh, this, this stage of the match, I was really concerned for Barham. I mean, even after taking a lot of punishment. Did you think you were going to be able to retain the titles at this point in the match? Tell you, you know, you, uh, you really can't be out there. Well, what's you your opinion on that? What's my opinion on that? I was never in doubt that we would. What about what about your brother? What? Oh, Ugo, let me tell you, when we step in that ring, there's never any shred of doubt in our mind that the outcome is going to be our hands getting raised. Now granted this was a very tough match and there's a big forearm onto my chest that I felt real bad. But see, now we're starting to use the tactics that they use and it just goes to show you that we're going to do whatever we have to do to win. That's why I never get concerned about losing the belt. That's things that maybe you should worry about. Well, okay fans, I'm having uh, some uh well, Ugo, Different I, opinions here. Well, I'm on your side, Ugo. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Well, there yeah, you see Ugo again, there. They're, they're we, have never, we have never seen two twins in action and then also narrate the matches. So this is very confusing for me. Well, the... You know, look at this New Zealand sheep herder right now, I Ugo. I'm going to get to the match. You guys can talk about whatever you want to talk about, but I'm going to be respectful to the people that bought this video, and I'm going to describe the action that's going on in the ring. It's a rear chin lock, almost a sleeper type of a hold, but still it's a type of hold that wears you down, and that's exactly what they're trying to do to me right now. What's the, the, the way to try to escape from this hold? Well, you just got to uh, reach down inside your guts, and if you know what I'm talking about, there's that special feeling, that never say die type of situation, that substance in your body that's not going to let you give up. You reach down, you grab for whatever it takes to do whatever it takes to get over and tag my brother. And oh, see, the big head right there, and I moved out of the way, and now we've got a chance to get a little revenge back on these guys for the punishment they've been giving me. I can't find my way to the corner, and there I make the tag. Tell you, Ugo, I, I can tell you one thing right now. At this point in the match, I was, what was one on your mad. Mind right now? I was very mad. They abused my brother every Whoa. way possible, and all I wanted to do was just beat him up. Okay, now all over. Luke Williams and uh, reversal here against the turnbuckle. Here it comes. Good move. Oh, and a sleeper. sleeper right there, Ugo. 
Oh. See the people right there. They think that might be in question, right? Well, no, he's not going to allow it. Okay, Butch Miller coming in, and now I'm not going to allow it. Four men in the ring. Hey, we do right here, Ugo. We had to go after him, or we might be in a little bit in danger of losing our belts. Whoa. Okay, now oh. here, what happened here? One, one of you was hit against uh, 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 Butch Miller. No, look, Williams. That's right. And there I am trying to fight two guys at one time and hold my own a little bit. But there they finally got the best of me, and you can only go two on one yeah, for so long. They're strong. Oh, good move. Drop kick. All right. See? Ed Butch Miller goes out of the ring. And it's not one on one. Now it's time to get back a little bit for what they were doing to me. And I tell you what, Hugo, I'm tired and I'm worn out. And I'm trying uh, to. There they come. He just comes right in. You know, Hugo, I'm supposed There's to be no the legal man in the ring, too. They got uh, Bart in there. Oh, He's big knee. And out the real rope goes. They say, that's going to make things a little different right there. And I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to take care of what has to be done out oh, there. Oh, good move. Referee gets knocked out. Uh oh, there goes the referee. Yeah. I don't know who got the worst hit. The referee. Hey, why is the referee not counting, Hugo? That's what I want to know. Why he just, is he not He just count? got hit. He just got hit. He just got oh, hit. look out. Oh. He just got hit by the. Well. Here comes the flag. How many times have the you pole. seen this happen? Oh, many times. Hey, Hugo, I'm here to tell you that uh, put a knot on my head for about a week and a half right there. I don't really remember much of after that stage of the match. Lights out for one of the bad men. What's this referee doing? And the controversial pinfall coming at this match as the New Zealand Sheep Herders in this hot Saturday night. At this given time, you're absolutely right. They hot they Saturday were night. We were hot champions. about that, Hugo. I, Hugo, like I gotta say, at uh, this point in the match, I'm down there on the mat. I really don't remember much until really a couple hours later. Celebration. Back at home. Celebration time for the New Zealand team. But, oh, wait a minute. Another referee comes into the ring. Ricky See, Vargas. Now there, there is justice. See, there's a Ricky Vargas. You've got to give credit where credit is due. He's an intelligent referee. He knows what the sheep herders are capable of. And he was watching the match to make sure that what just happened wouldn't happen. And they get the belts on a cheap shot. And it looks like, as far as I'm concerned, well, I know for a fact, he came out and did oh, like, the rifle thing and gave the, the titles right here. back to us. Exactly right. Okay, by disqualification, the Batten Twins retain the World Tag Team Championship. We outsmart the promotion anyway. And it's hot. Saturday night. It's getting hotter here in the studio, too. Let's take you now to the next match. All right, wrestling fans, we're on to our fourth match here on uh, uh, Anniversary 88, uh, Hot Night in Bayamon. And this match, Bart, pits uh, Dangerous Dan Spivey against the uh, Chief, Wahoo McDaniel. Yeah, you, you can also say that it pits two ex-football players against each other, and I know, Brad, we're going to appreciate that, being ex-football players ourselves. Wahoo McDaniel and Dangerous Danny Spivey, both college football stars, made it all the way up to professional football and now they're bringing their wars they've been going all over the united states and now on this hot night in bayamon they're right in the middle of the ring ready to go after it again could be also a little bit more of animosity as professional jealousy could be here a major source of uh, this rivalry as wahoo was a bigger star in pro football when he played uh tremendous years for the new york new york jets so a lot of things uh may be behind what we might just know here well, you got, uh, I think what you're talking about there, Ugo, and uh, I hate to say at this stage of the game that you're right, but I have to. You hate to say that yeah, I'm right. I hate to say it, but I'm going to. You're right. These guys, you call it, uh, I don't know, reputations. They both have reputations, and they're not going to let either of their reputations suffer from the reputation of the other. Can you follow that? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Hey, hang in there, Ugo. My yes. brother's just, uh, I, I don't know if he had uh, ate a bad burrito today or what, but, uh, you know, I agree with you, too. This is going to be an excellent match. These two guys, uh, like we've said, no love lost. They're out to prove a point. Who is the better man? And maybe back in the back of their minds, who was the greatest football player, yeah, too? Yeah, and when Spivey gets angry, and we have seen that uh, many, many times in the World Wrestling Council, a lot of stitches have been... Uh, given by this man here, including eyes, broken noses, and more of that, because Spivey 
and he hits hard. Well, just look at the man, Ugo. He's probably six foot eight, six foot seven. He probably weighs up close to 300 pounds. He is a big man, but he just felt, I was just getting ready to say, Wahoo McDaniel's big chop, and he has probably one of the most devastating chops in the sport of professional wrestling. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. One time uh, coming out of the airport, I went to we pick him up. We won't hold that against him. Oh, my goodness. I, and he chopped in a friendly, just a friendly Indian chop. And I had the five fingers there for over two days. Hey, Ugo, it's a thunderous chop, and uh, any of the fans out there can't even really appreciate it until you have maybe got in the ring or had, like you said, have him demonstrate it to you and feel the power that he puts behind that hand. Well, you can just you can hear the smack every time he hits the chest. You can see the sweat fly. I mean, he's got some momentum behind that chop. But there's Dan dangerous Danny Spivey doing what he does best, brawling. He's taking the big Indian down, and I personally hope he puts a real hurting on him. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know if I agree with that or not. I think that you uh, personally you know, hope that Spivey Wahoo hurts Wahoo. Yeah, Wahoo's one of our friends too. And so I, wait a minute. So now I got heat with your brother, and now he wants Spivey to. What did he eat this morning? I, I don't know. I'm not really sure, Ugo. Uh, uh, but uh, like I say, uh, uh, Wahoo is one of our. I was going to invite you guys ours, uh, uh, next Saturday home, but. Not if he's going to behave like that. Dangerous you know? Danny McSpivey going to town on Wahoo McDaniel. Regardless of what you two want to go over there and talk about, I'm going to talk about the match. There's a big Irish whip into the turnbuckle, the elbow to the top of the head. Ugo, he is hurting Wahoo McDaniels right now and hopefully maybe hurting that ego a little bit. Blood all over the face of the great Indian warrior, Wahoo McDaniel, a lot of trouble here. Yes, sir. He's been, uh, Dandre Stan's been pounding that head, and obviously he's done a little bit of damage there, and the uh, Chief's in a little bit of trouble. But, Ugo, you know and I know that when Wahoo's down, he's certainly not out, and we can expect to definitely. see a barrage of those big chops coming oh, just about any time. Well, Don't count him out. I think he looks good in red, personally. Wow, Ugo, what's going on over here? Oh, my goodness. He's my brother, and I don't even know. He's my twin brother, and I don't even know. Well, if you don't know, imagine me. Yeah, really. I'm having trouble just holding the microphone. I tell you, just a, a big rear chin lock right here. Just what's he doing right there, Ugo? He's trying to get that blood flow right up through the neck into that forehead and cause more loss of blood to weaken Wahoo McDaniels. And as far as I'm concerned, hey, the means justify the ends or the ends justify the means, however you want to look at it. Referee Saul Scarante asking Wahoo if he surrenders. Yeah, but the Indian uh, chief is not a quitter. No, he's not going to quit, Ugo. He's oh, look just, at those punches. Okay, Knuckle he's, City here. Uh, Danger Stan Spivey is a big man, so you know he's got a big knuckle, and Wahoo McDaniel's forehead's definitely getting a good introduction to it. But uh, like I say, uh, Wahoo's not down yet, and he's certainly not out, so uh, this match is a really great match. Just typifies Anniversary 88, a hot night in Bayamon, and uh, the Chief's really in trouble. Do you think your brother's upset because I heard, I heard to Ellis Montalvo and myself uh, took about an hour extra to uh, come into the TV studio, maybe? Uh, I don't know. That, uh, that's a possibility, Ugo. You know, normally wondering. We're, wondering. we're pretty late well, back, guys. You, know, you got to realize that uh, our time is very valuable. The fact that we had take the time out to sit down here with you, and, you know, we've got a thousand other things that we could do, but we thought that we would uh, improve the quality of this tape right here for the people out there watching it on their TVs. We thought we'd add a little class to the tape, and that's why we're sitting here, whether you want to agree with that point of view or not. Well, Bart, it's an honor for us to be here and uh, for E&G Productions, Fast Eddie, and uh, sit here with Ugo and bring this, uh, these great matches to the people. I, I don't know. Well, there's okay. uh, Wahoo McDaniel trying to throw a few elbows into the midsection and uh, just not having any effect on this big guy. Danny McSpivey is showing exactly what he can do to Wahoo McDaniel. That's why I call him McSpivey there, Ugo, because he's got green on. I mean, let's make this all Irish, right? Okay, if you say so. I ain't going to disagree with you. Here we go. Tremendous big kick. Big boot. Big right, boot. Spivey, yeah, he follows through. He hooks right the there. leg. Oh, hey, the Chiefs uh, not out yet. No. He kicked out, and now Spivey doing more damage to the forehead. But here comes the Chief. Oh! oh. oh look, now look at that, Ugo. I guess you're going to sit there and tell me that that was a great wrestling move right there. No, I won't. I would just say it's survival. Was I'm a, a survivor myself. Are these two animals out here? They're going for uh, they're going for broke. You got to do what you got to do, right? He's a Ugo? bloody mess, and he wants to protect his life. Uh, I don't agree with that. Why does he have to resort to that? I okay, mean, it's Spivey in trouble now. 
I guess a trap buckle. Here comes the chief. Oh, Did big you see right the there. size of that boot as it came? Yeah, that's right gotta be. Off. Nobody saw it any closer. Oh, wait a minute. McDaniels. Close to the ropes. They're holding now, on. What's the referee doing right there? He has no business interfering in the match. Well, that uh, Spivey point. was trying to yeah, cheat. Yeah, had his foot on the rope, bar. Spivey, McSpivey has got He's, a valid. Oh, right big here. mistake. He oh, got this right from the referee. Here we go. Two, three. Yeah, I knew he could do it. Say, why don't they raise the hand of the referee? He's the one that won that match for Wahoo McDaniel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before uh, anything else happens here, we are going to take you into another great match of this hot Saturday night, which I'm starting to wonder, which is hotter than the TV story right here on that night. Gentlemen, before we go into the match, we made it three and chicken star. We're going to show you an incident that occurred prior to that match. Chicky Star had issued a special invitation to the Super Medic, but he was going to be in, boys, for a big surprise on that night. Well, I tell you, Go, I think, uh, you know, I remember this particular situation when it occurred. It occurred at, uh, here in B. Thorne Stadium here in San Juan, and I'm sure you were just as pleased as Punch at the final outcome of this particular situation. No, I was not uh, pleased at all. I don't like people uh, being uh, hit that way or suffer the way uh, Chicken Star did or anybody else, but we have to recall to the people that it was Chicken Star's, uh, one of his wrestlers, uh, Reggie Bull Manny Fernandez, who had previously injured in Beta 3. That's exactly right, Hugo, and uh, right here, you know, the, the world professional wrestling is tough, and uh, what the people are about to see is what happens sometimes when you try to injure a man and put him out of wrestling permanently. Yeah, but that's just one of the risks that you take whenever you get in a squared circle, Brad. You ought to know that. Ugo ought to know that. He's been in there before. Now look at this cheap shot right here by the soon-to-be the Invader 3. Now, you want to tell me, Ugo, that that was particularly necessary right there? No, I don't think it was necessary, but you never know how a human being is going to react when he's been hurt before. In the case of Invader 3, the Ray Boom Manny Fernandez, who was managed by Chicky Star, almost... Uh, Almost killed this man. That's exactly right, Ugo. You know, he jumped off the top rope on the man's stomach, and uh, he had a lot of internal bleeding. It was a bloody mess out there. I mean, he could have killed the man, Bart. Well, and this was payback. Exactly right. We're not saying it's right, but it's revenge. Well, I, I tell you, I totally disagree with the whole situation. Like I said, every time you get in a squared circle, you're taking your life into your own hands, and that's exactly what Invader 3 did when he got in the ring with Manny Fernandez, and to go out here and cause this kind of of harm this kind of punishment to Chicky Star when he was not really directly responsible for the Invader 3's injuries. Well, I, I think that's just totally. Barbaric. Wait a minute, Bar. If he, if he was not directly responsible, uh, you know, he was Manny Fernandez's manager, and uh, he's going to tell Manny what to do. So how can you say he was not directly involved? Yeah, but he didn't go out there and do it himself. You know, it's it's not like he actually did all the damage to uh, Invader 3. And, and look at this. There's a uh, doctor. Hector Gonzalez, who probably has more appearances than any tape put out by uh, ENG Productions and Capital Sports Promotions. He's a main attraction, and particularly in a situation like this. Now, look at the back of the head. I don't remember or recall how many stitches Chicky got uh, from this particular situation, but uh, I tell you, I disagree with the whole thing. It was about 14 stitches. And it was something horrendous, but like we said before, it's sometimes uh, people do things to get even, and even though if we don't agree with their tactics, in the case of Chicky, star he has caused a lot of injuries to a lot of wrestlers and this time the people were actually very very happy that this happened you know, Ugo, that's exactly the point i was going to make i think the people finally enjoyed seeing chicky star get a taste of his own medicine right here are oh, you saying they're enjoying looking at look at this graphic gore right here brad you're telling me that there's people out well you gotta remember this is puerto rico too and that's their kind of mentality right Ugo? oh wait a minute wait a minute don't get me into this uh, situation here i'm just an innocent bystander here. Well, you take up for your people all the time. No, I'm just, I just call like it is, and uh, 
You know, nobody saying that I'm right all the time, but I try to be as accurate as I can, and I just call it the way I see it. I know the fans uh, were surprised to find out that the super medic was really the Invader 3 and that he had used the mask of a good friend of him who was uh, the, the super medic. Well, you know, how the doctor was uh, doing the initiation to shave off the hair and then to stitch up the about 14 stitches yeah. on the head. But I'm telling you what, Hugo, I don't think anybody was more surprised than Chicky Star to have uh, Invader 3 come out there and uh, give him a little payback. And the what? doctor was afraid of moving him. Well, there's one thing I can say, Hugo, if there's anybody that's skeptical out there that uh, all they have to do is sit there and see this particular situation right here to realize the dangers that we have to look for and take chances for. Every time we get in a squared circle, that is not a pretty sight. No, no it's, it's not. It certainly isn't, Bart, but like you say, every night you go out there, you put your career on the line, you put your body on the line, Chicky Star just wasn't his night. And now, here comes the match. Okay, here we are, back into the hot night, and Bayamon, Chicky Star against the Invader 3, and uh, this is where Chicky Star will actually get his chance of revenge. And now look at this, Hugo. How can you explain this? The Invader 3 brings in an axe handle in the ring and starts laying it back on Chicky Star. Now, there's no excuse for that. Anger and the desire of getting even. I don't think he was satisfied with his stitches on that Chicky Star sports shop. And he was out to just take him out of wrestling, just like his wrestler did. And he and Chicky Star came out in TV and said that he had ordered Manny Fernandez to put him out of professional wrestling. So there you go, Bart, directly involved in the Manny Fernandez situation. So as far as I'm concerned and Hugo's concerned, I'm sure just about everybody else out there watching this tape is concerned, Chicky Star is getting another taste of his own medicine. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh Ugo's opinions are always biased towards uh, people like Invader Trace and uh, Carlos Colon and all those other guys. His well, opinions are biased. Minute. And look at Chicky Star right here, bleeding once again profusely at the hands of Invader 3. And uh, I have a feeling Chicky Star is going to reach down and give Invader 3 exactly what he deserves, Ugo. And that's a real hiney kicking. Well, can you verify your accusations here? What accusations? You know exactly what I'm saying is true. Brad knows it's true whether he wants to admit it or not. Here's Invader 3, right once again, right outside the ring there. It was a little rainy that night, a little muddy. I mean, anything can happen out there. And finally, Chicky Star gets back in the ring. Invader 3 looks like he's mad, but I know Chicky Star is going to end up getting the upper hand, and it's just going to take a few minutes, isn't it, Brad? Well, I tell you what, Bar, right here, you know, Invader, Invader 3's got the... Uh, initiative right here. I mean, it is a hot night in Bayamon. It's a, uh, anniversary 88. And he's just going out there and taking care of business the only way you really can when you're dealing with a guy like Chicky Star, and that's to go fist city, toe and, or tooth and nail, and just try to beat him before he can get it at upper hand and come back on you. He was biting him right here, all over the head and forehead of Chicky Star. You could see the blood just gushing down from the forehead of Chicky Star. Referee is the Bikingo from Central America. All right, Chicky Star finally did what he had to do. A, a low shot. And, uh, well, you were talking survival a little, a couple of matches ago, Hugo, and that's exactly what Chicky Star was right coming in the back. Area. Are you uh, co uh, contradicting no, yourself No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I just wanted you to describe that it was a low, a low blow, that it was uh, right in the groin area. No, no, it wasn't in the groin at all. You must not have been looking. He hit him right in the uh, solar plexus area. And there's a reverse atomic breaker. And, uh, you know, you're going to say, yeah, that's the groin area too. But you're wrong. What you, what at least it's legal. At least it's exactly, legal. Exactly, it is legal. And then you got uh, El Vikingo, the referee there, who I think is one of the most worthless referees in the sport of professional wrestling. He's doing absolutely I'll nothing. I'll tell you what. But I'll have to agree to with you on that. Way. Well, he did. What? I'll have to agree with you on did that. Did you hear that, Brad? Yeah, I sure did, and I think I'm going to have to agree with you there, too, Bart. Vikingo, okay. uh, he doesn't know. I can't believe this. We finally agree on something here. Yeah, I think we all agree Vikingo doesn't know a wrist watch from a wrist lock. Yes, sir. Well, there's Invader 3 using that hard head again. and finally stopped Chicky a little bit, but uh, I just wish Vikingo would just stay out of the way and let these guys settle the sc uh, score once and for all. Hey, Vikingo, just get out of there. You're you're nothing but being in the way. Okay, Invader 3 all over. Chicky Star and the fans are loving every second of it. Big turnbuckle. Down goes Chicky Star. Hey, this is really a great match, Hugo. It's been going back and forth, back and forth. No man's really had the upper hand. You know, Chicky Star's bloody, but he's still got his punches oh, in. He's this begging. He's begging. 
right here. Oh, uh, could be some. Uh, Maybe the no mass. No, there's no ticket. there's no moss going on here. You're starting to sound like Bobby Jaggers now, Hugo. There's no. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait, no wait moss a minute. Going on here. Wait a minute. All he's. Have, ju have I just been compared to Bobby Jaggers? Oh, you said that not. Can't really. believe this. I can't I believe this. Invader three shooting Chicky Star in the ropes and oh, there's Ooh. a big gut to the mid kick to the midsection. Actually, very star. low, very low. Kick. Well, you're very questionable, but uh, once again, you look at the referee; he's not going to do anything about it. Chicky Starts is going to have to reach down into his intestinal fortitude area that I know he has, and pull out something to stop the Invader Three. Look at he's biting him on the forehead. Never let be said that the World Wrestling Council action and all the tapes put out by ENG Productions and Capital Sports Promotions are not a lot of violence because it's a very violent sport that we're in, Hugo, and I think this match typifies that violence. Well, in the Caribbean, a lot of things happen and they like hot action. And when you come down here to the Caribbean, you could expect to be in with some tough guys that want to go out and do some damage on your faces and bodies. You're absolutely right, Hugo. I think the World Wrestling Council is uh, probably one of the roughest, toughest uh, wrestling uh, organizations in the whole world because uh, you never know what's going to happen when you go out there from night to night. I mean, some, you got the fans out there throwing stuff oh, at there you. Oh, big shot by the there there. Right there. Shiki Star is in big trouble right now, Hugo. But, He's uh, out of it. He's out of it. The World Wrestling Council is the best wrestling around. I don't care what anybody says. Well, you know, Hugo, Brad and I have had an opportunity to wrestle for a lot of prom uh, promotions uh, in the six years that we've been wrestling, and I can honestly say that the uh, World Wrestling Council, as far as uh, caliber of competition, as far as toughness of competition, as far as, I mean, where else are you going to see barbed wire matches and double chain matches and cage matches and double cage matches. I mean, everything that you could possibly see in the sport of professional wrestling to settle scores or whatever, you're going to catch in the World Wrestling Council. And I know Fast Eddie is going to catch it in the ENG production tapes regardless of when they come out. I'll tell you what, that was well said. Pretty good. Pretty good. The Invader 3. A compliment coming from you, Hugo? Yes, I believe it was. At least it was intended to be. Did you notice that kick just hit the side of the head of the Invader 3 well, against Sh the ring post? Shiki Star is finally gaining control of the match. It's just a matter of time before Invader 3 ran out of gas or whatever, ran out of tactics, ran out of punches, because he was throwing an awful lot of punches. And you know, Ugo, punches are technically illegal, but when you got a referee like that, El Bikino, then you just got to take matters into your own hand. Well, Shiki Star now. Looks like he's a little bit more fresh than uh, the Invader 3. Perhaps all that punching that Invader 3 did has uh, exhausted him. Oh, oh, oh Invader 3 Quick kicks his right, right there. The leg, yep. right on the ropes. Uh, once again, smart uh, ringmanship by Chicky Star. He knows where he's at at all times in the ring, and he does what he has to do. Uh, he saved his no. butt, actually, because uh, he was out for the count. The Invader 3 looks like he's got a little bit of new life now, Hugo. He's taking it to Chicky Star. Well, there, Chicky Star swinging it there, there, Hugo. Oh, there's a Ooh. couple of jabs, couple of jabs, and there's that big right. Brings oh, Chicky Star down. I tell you, he's hurting bad right here, but I've got confidence that Chicky Star is going to overcome this particular In situation. a moment like this is when a through athlete proves how great he is. You're absolutely right, Hugo. We've been in the ring many times with Chicky Star, and we know exactly how tough this individual is. And even though he's in the... Kind of in a losing. You cannot count him right out. Now. You know, you can't count him out. Yes. He's tough. He's dangerous. Well, as like the old, an evil snake. As the old cliche goes, you, it's never over until the fat lady sings and she ain't singing yet. And it's probably somebody you might know anyway. Well, he's probably sitting around with Eddie Grice somewhere. Well, that's a possibility too. Okay, meanwhile, the Invader 3, it's all over. And look at this. Uh, star. Illegal tactics. Uh, and I have to be honest about it. It hasn't been a scientific uh, strategy battle here. It's been just uh, uh, an all-intention battle of destroying Chicky Star by the Invader 3 here. Well, I think what you're trying to say there, Hugo, is it's all-out war. Yes, it's been that. Well, you know, Hugo, when you got uh, Chicky Star, who had 14 stitches put in his head by Invader 3, and then Randy Fernandez, who almost ended Invader 3's career while Ooh. managed by Chicky. Oh, there's a low blow. No, no, no. You didn't. It, why are you, that, was, why, that was a shot to the groin right Why are you right misleading there? the people out there who are watching on their homes? Why are you misleading those fat men out there that are sucking down a beer right now and misleading them into the type of tactics that Chicky's using? It was merely a hard shot to the solar plexus. Oh. 
Oh, Who's are we watching the same match? I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought I heard something. Oh, about there's a big knee by Chicky Star. You all go Matt, ahead and continue your commentary. TV? Yes, you Jeez. know they're out there, Hugo. There's guys out there that think they're bad. You're talking about truck drivers. These guys that they're go down, nice the, pool, they they go down the pool halls and think that they can play pool with the best. And you've seen the best in action. And that's what I'm pointing this comment to, the fat guys out there that think they're so bad that there's no way they could go out and do what these two athletes are doing in the ring right now, and that's selling out and giving everything they got. Well, I don't think we, we agree with the, the comments on, uh, let's identify your name again because you, you are twins, and I don't want people to confuse the other one on that previous statement, which I would not be too proud to. Hey, now, Hugo, we'll now I'm going to draw the line here. Uh, you know, Bart is my brother. I'm... And it's really hard. Uh, you can't say that about my brother. I'm, I'm, I agree with him about the fat truck drivers and all oh. those other uh, worthless guys out there that think they're tough. I mean, if, you wanna, if you're tough, you get in the ring with a professional wrestler, and you're going to find out what tough is, particularly the likes of the sensational Batten twins. I think that answered your question well, right there, Hugo. Chicky uh, Star, yes, yes, once again, did. battling tooth and nail with the Invader 3, and they're just exchanging punches right now back and forth. And there's a head into the turnbuckle, which once again stops Chicky Star now. But, Ugo, how much punishment do you think Chicky Star can take? He's taken a lot of punishment, but he's still, oh, oh big back. He's big a back very drop tricky, right very tricky individual. Good drop oh, kicks by the Invader kick 3. By the Invader 3. The Invader 3, known for his two. flag That's tactics. it, Chicky, kick out. He should have hooked the leg. I think he had enough uh, to cover him. I just thought that he should have. Well, I think uh, stamina is starting to play a vital role in this match right now. Oh, uh, watch this oh, move. Up in the second rope. Uh, Nobody makes it better. Press. Oh, uh, Chicky Star rolls it over. Reversal. Well, I thought that was it right there, Hugo. I think it should have been it. If I can go, he can't even count to three. Hey, I don't, I don't think he can either. I, I agree with uh, Bobby Jagger's comment oh, on one other no. oh, back he's out. Flex. I think he's got him. Tell tell you, I oh, he's got him. Oh, I two seconds. Very, very, very close. Pequeno. It's uno, dos, tres in Spanish, or one, two, three in English for the people out there at home. And it's one, it was a close two, count. three for you slow-thinking people out there. Slow thing. Oh, that's a okay. smart move on Chicky Star. Meanwhile, right uh, Chicky Star, it's all over in Bayer 3. I'm, I'm being confused here. I, I don't know anymore. Hey, there, now, see, finally, Chicky Star used his brains, used his stamina, used his dexterity, whatever you want to call it, and he pulled the match out. There he is getting his hand raised. Chicky Star put it on the Invader Trace. A fantastic hard fought battle and a sensational win for Chicky Star. He's bloody, but he is the winner. There's the doctor, Gonzalez again, checking now on the Invader 3. He gets a lot of business, doesn't he, Hugo? Very dangerous profession. I will not say that he gets a lot of business. He's a good friend and a good doctor. Well, and we are I, about to well, ready with any more comments. I agree with Bart. He's, he gets a lot of business to, down here, Hugo. Uh, let's see how this developed here. Yes. Good move by see, Chicky he Star. Holds the rope. It was an over-aggressive move by the Invader 3. Head, head, head first into the canvas. He snapped that head back on the canvas, and that's enough to make you Good see elbow. stars. Big elbow Big drop. Big elbow. Him very fast. And went for the cover. He hooked the leg. He hooked the leg right here. I have to agree with you there, Hugo, even though it kills me and to do it. And it was all over. And, hey, Chicky Star, a hot summer night, and Bayamon is the winner of this particular Okay, match. fans, uh, we are going to take you immediately to our next match. A hot night in Bayamon. It gets hotter. Here we are with our sixth match, and uh, if, this, if any match on the whole hot summer night in Bayamon typifies how hot of a night it was, it's this match here, the Iron Sheik against uh, Hands of Stone, Ronnie Garvin. And here's the Iron Sheik singing the national anthem of Iran. I guess that's what he's doing, Ugo. I can't understand Iranian. But uh, this is uh, obviously his way of... Greeting these, these great people of this great island, of this great rock of Puerto Rico. And he's got the right idea. He's telling the people of Sierra La Boca. USA is a sick country like you. Iran, number one. I don't think the Iron Sheik realizes that uh, not uh, everybody out in the audience speaks English. Uh, you know. Well, I don't think it really matters. It's hard to understand them anyway. Uh, that's true, too. Whatever he speaks. Well, we talk about some strange individuals. Well, he's one of them. 
Well, I tell you, we go. This match uh, pits probably two household names, and anybody that's a hardcore wrestling fan has heard of the Iron Sheik and the Hands of Stone, Ronnie Garvin. And this promises to be nothing less than a brawl because anytime you get these two guys together in the squared circle, you're not going to have a wrestling match. And right away, there's the Iron Sheik laying it in to Ronnie Garvin. He hadn't even taken off his robe garb yet, and he's already he's taking that towel. Garvin brings in the ring. He's choking with him. I tell you what, I'm enjoying this a lot. He is all over. Hands up, Stone. Ronnie Garman, let's talk a little bit about their careers. Irish Sheik and ex-WWF World Heavyweight Champion. And Hands up, Stone. Ronnie Garman, former NWA World Champion. Also, World Wrestling Council's ex-Universal Champion. So there's too many there that want to prove who is the better of the two. And they have the ability and the talent to do so. That's right. This is a classic match, Hugo. Right now, the Iron Sheik's uh, choking him with that uh, Sheik gear or whatever it is he wears on his head some kind of towel or drape or whatever it is and Ronnie Garvin was the referee again uh, well, Ugo I wasn't even going to mention anything about the referee the king was there that's right he uh, I think they purposely I think uh, capital sports promotion intentionally puts him in these kind of no, matches. wait 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 no wait, wait a minute do anything I don't they think he's not going to I do could anything. talk because uh, I I know uh, for a fact that the Kingo uh, he's assigned by the World Wrestling Council by the local commission here in capital sports has nothing to do with uh, uh, the assignments on who is going to referee this match or the other. Well, you know, Hugo, I think uh, a requisite for being a referee is you ought to be able to count to three, and Vikingo can't even do that. Well, I, you know, Hugo, you, you go ahead and, and you say that, and you make the people out there believe whatever you want to make them believe, but I'm telling you people out there, and I'm once again referring to those fat slobs that are sitting there with their brewski hanging out of their hand, that Vikingo is assigned matches like this because they know that he can't control them, and and look at oh, Iron Sheik, he's going crazy. But there's a big chop from Ronnie Garvin. Oh, and you know that he those delivers. are very heavy chops, Ugo. Not only is he famous, oh, oh there's his hand of stone. Wow. They, uh, took the Iron Sheik right off his feet. Uh, everybody knows how famous that big right hand is of Ronnie Garvin. Oh, he's biting the Iron Sheik right now. I tell you, just absolute mayhem. There's a hand nail rake across the back. And Ronnie Garvin pulling oh, down the tights. And what a uh, move here! It's a oh, full what, moon, what, hot what, night in Bayamon, Hugo. Oh, you hit it right in the nail because uh, the Iron Sheik never expected that. He looks like he's uh, begging Nala there for a little Whoa. mercy, maybe. He's going to need more than that. Oh, there's two fingers. Now, Hugo, how can the referee allow stuff like that? There's Vakino. He saw the fingers go in the eye of the Iron Sheik. And he's doing I'm just going to stop talking about well, it. Well, it's a battle right from the beginning. It's going to get rougher because. Don't count the Sheik out. Well, like you said, Hugo, two former world champions, one in the WWF and the other in the NWA, plus Ronnie Garvin did hold the prestigious World Wrestling Council Universal Heavyweight title. There's a cover. And there's a one, two, and uh, I don't think Vakinio can count the three, do you, Brad? I don't either. You know, Bart, I'm, I have a tendency to agree with uh, our friend Bobby Jaggers when he refers to El Vikingo as El Domo, El Referee. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I just hear you say our friend... That's Bobby right, Jaggers? Bobby Jaggers is a very good friend of ours, Ugo, and I'll thank you not to say anything derogatory about him because I just don't want you to. And uh, not Did only you that, just there's... Said, let me just get this straight. Wait a minute, maybe I'm not hearing right. Uh, you said my friend Bobby Jaggers. That's exactly right. Bobby Jaggers and I go back to, uh, all the way to 1974. Eddie, I am in deep trouble right here. Eddie okay. Grice. And Iron Sheik with a rear chin lock right now. And Ronnie Garvin, he's uh, controlling the tempo of the match. Garvin's trying to bridge up. Now he's up into a top wrist lock. And uh, El Vaquino's sitting there wondering, hey, I don't even think I know what this hold is. That's exactly right, Bart, because he doesn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. Like I said earlier, he's a worthless referee. He's El Vikingo, El Domo, El Ref. And there is a show of power by the Iron Sheik right there as he powered Ronnie Garvin back into the headlock from that top wrestler. I'm starting wrestler. to have uh, flashbacks right here. Well, you go ahead and have your flashbacks, Ugo. We're going to sit here and bring this great match to the people's That's out right, there. Ugo. You Whoa. don't have to say anything if you don't want to because Brad and I have got total control of the situation. We're the men with the rap, the men with the looks, the men that get all the women. We know exactly what we're doing, where we've been, where we're going, and what's going to happen. So you sit there and think about Bobby Jaggers, and we'll describe the Iron Sheik putting those big heavy boots to the upside-down Ronnie Garvin in the turnbuckle. And uh, remember another Pretty thing. Pretty close to disqualification here. You think Bikino's smart enough to 
disqualify anybody. Look at that. He threw the man off the rope there. If I can't, he got a clue. Well, classic battle right here, Brand. Classic. Oh, there's, oh. A, there's a big jump. He came out of nowhere. Everybody, Did you see the sweat just flying off the oh, chest? They, they heard it up in the 200th row of uh, Juan Labriel Stadium there in Bayamar. Oh, there's a big double knockout right there. He's going to get up first. I think it's going to be the Iron Chief. Full we'll see strength of uh, body tackle there. Three. But here comes the Sheik. Oh, here's a cow. Ex-Olympic wrestler. That's exactly right. Gold that's medalist winner. You know, Hugo, you surprised me with some of your intelligent remarks sometimes, because that's exactly what I was going to say. Well, I'm so, surprised uh, I'm still hanging in here after a couple of the statements that I haven't, I haven't well, heard There's here. a salto side suplex from the Iron Sheik, and I guarantee you, Hugo, anytime you see the Iron Sheik wrestle, you're going to get a suplex clinic, and whoever's in the He's room, an expert. He's an expert. Hey, he... You, you ask any well-known individual in I think sport. he's crazy, too, but he does have a, a, that ability to surprise his opponents. Well, that's a camel clutch yeah, here. Uh, near camel clutch here. If he gets his arms up on his knees, he's in trouble. He's made a lot of money with that hold. Now look at Ronnie Garvin. Hey, no, you got a classic brawler right here. What does he do? He takes it outside the ring, and what is he going to do? He's going to take that leg. No, that's Oh, this is illegal. Going. Wait this a minute. This is illegal, Hugo. Make a wish here. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, look at Vikingo. Once again, he's not doing anything to stop this. He should disqualify. Ooh. Oh, oh. Uh, Damon, you, you uh, call for That just it, hurts yeah. just to see it. Even the fat beer bellied Ooh. men out there can relate to uh, getting uh, hurt like that. Well, I how guess come uh, when you said all those fat 60 second man, wonders out there. How come when you said fat man, you looked at my editor here? Is this something personal? Well, no, uh, but if the shoe fits, wear it. All right, there's the sleeper hold applied by Ronnie Garvin, and he's a great administrator of that hold. The Iron Sheik is uh, in a lot of trouble right here, but I've got a feeling that he's going to find a way to get out of this sleeper hold. Brad. Hugo, once again, and Bart, a, a hot night, Good anniversary sleeper. 88. What a hot match this is, and the decision's still not uh, decided yet. It could go either way. Well, there's a cover by the Ronnie Garvin, and the Iron Sheik managed to kick out. And what a move by Garvin. He had the sleeper, yet he went for the cover, and it didn't turn out the way he want it, but he did take a gamble and it almost paid off. A well, blatant choke hold right there. Now here's an Irish Ooh, whip into the turnbuckle, turnbuckle and he comes in. Oh, oh big knee caught him right up under the chin and I don't think Ronnie Garvin was expecting that particular no. knee. Caught him off guard. Here it comes. Oh, oh good. Sunset, sunset, sunset flip. Two. Look at that. Uh, he kicked out, and Vikingo still slapping the mat, Ugo. Brad, he's what? a lost cause. Well, I think, maybe he's a little bit slow. I think know. Ugo's responsible for him getting his referee's license. Oh, there's a drop oh. kick by Ronnie Garvin. What a Garvin. drop kick by Garvin. Hey, that's something you don't see very often either, Ugo, is Ronnie Garvin throw a flying drop kick yes, like that. Yes, it's money out there, and oh, oh, not that much of balance chops. out there. Oh, there's another one of those chops. Ooh. And it just looks like a Saturday night at the chopping matches here. Uh, both guys brawling outside the ring. And referee's okay. counting. Referee's it's exactly counting. Kind of match that uh, I would expect from these two uh, ex-world champions. Well, if they, uh, they don't get back in the ring, it's gonna, they're both going to be counted. Oh, Ronnie Garvin hit that turnbuckle post. Here that it shoulder. comes. Close oh, line. there's a clothesline. I tell you, he moved. the uh, arm absolutely He'll no be good feeling that for days. That uh, did the brachioradialis okay. muscle no good Okay, Garvin whatsoever. gets in as the referee is counting. And it's a count out for the Iron Sheik and in a... Tremendous battle here. A lot of chops, punching, and kicking. A classic brawl, Hugo. And Garvin and, uh, wins it. If I were the Iron Sheik, I would question the decision right here because I don't think uh, Bikino can Wait count to 20. The Sheik is not uh, accepting this uh, defeat here. Oh, I don't blame him. I don't think Bikino can count to 20. He probably went one, it's two, having an 20. argument here. He's not happy. He was surprised. Here he comes. He attacks uh, Garvin. It. Take that's care. It. Take care of him, Iron Sheik. Get the, just get the Kingo oh, out of the way so uh, the Iron Sheik can just push him out of the way, Iron Sheik. Oh, oh there's the right hand. Oh. Hey, Ronnie Garvin's not taking any of that crap from uh, Whoa. Iron Sheik. There's oh, a he big right him. hand right there. Okay, take that to our Iron Sheik. Okay. Iron Sheik's not uh, right, stupid. He knows when crazy. to get. Gentlemen, we're going to take you now to another great match of the hot, hot night in Bayamon, anniversary 88. Caballera versus Caballera y sin límite. Okay, here we are back in a hot night in Bayamon, another tag team match featuring 
our friend Bobby Jaggers and Dandy Dan Crawford against the Barrio boys, Hurricane Castillo and Miguelito Perez in a hair versus hair match. And Brad, I tell you what, I don't think I'd wrestle in one of these kind of matches. You know, that's exactly right, Bart. I mean, uh, we why would we want to sign a contract for a hair versus hair? Because there's no way they're going to share these great lots we have, brother. That's part of our image. Well, right there, you're looking at one of the greatest classic physiques in the sport of professional wrestling. Down the type of physique. I'm talking about Bobby Jaggers. The type of oh, physique. Oh, get out of here. The type of physique. Get out of here. Men would kill for. That's definitely been a, a payoff here somewhere. Because right. Bobby Jaggers, boy, he doesn't come as. He's been very successful, yes. But not because of his body. He's a bully with that body. But it's nothing compared to a uh, muscle built like uh, Danny Dan Crawford. Well, Ugo, know. Ugo, let me try and put some kind of intelligent thought into it. See, now look at that. The Barrio boys right off the bat are jumping Crawford and Jaggers, and they haven't even had a chance to get their uh, Puerto Rican or their they Caribbean get a tag win. team champion. They want to get a win fast. They, it's a hair versus hair. No time limit. Everything goes. And that's the only way you could beat the Kansas City Jayhawks well, when you attack him right from the beginning. Well well, Hugo, that's his typical Puerto Rican style, is to attack a man from behind or two men from behind when they're not looking. Well, look at that. They're throwing, the Barrio boys are throwing into the scaffolding that uh, is holding up, uh, I don't know what they're holding up, the lights or something. But That's it really right, the lights. A difference. And, uh, you know, what's with the brawling outside the ring? It seems like... Uh, oh, we goes. No disqualification. It's a war. Oh, look at that. A uh, chair over the head of uh, Bobby Jaggers. And, uh, of course, I know Bobby's got a pretty hard head, and that might not affect him too much, but uh, come Come on, Hugo. This is totally uncalled Well, the hair hair match, uh, you know, brings a lot more determination on the opponents because uh, the loser gets their hair shaped right in the middle of the ring. Well, it seems like uh, Castillo Jr. and Miguelito Perez would want to get their head shaped because it sure couldn't hurt their looks any more than they already are. I tell you, I think it might actually. I think, their I looks think we're getting a little bit. bit too personal here. Oh no, we're not getting personal at all. Uh, you know, Miguelito Castillo. Uh, do I sense a little bit? Bars at, do I uh, sense? A, do I sense a, a little bit of jealousy oh, here no involved? Jealousy at all. Maybe gonna, some discrimination. Fact, if you'll just shut up and let me finish, I'll tell you where the jealousy is. The jealousy is the sensational Batten twins came to Puerto Rico and they took the tag team wrestling scene by storm. And Castillo and Miguelito didn't like it. Thought we were too big for our britches, and we went out there and proved to them that we're the best, and they just can't deal with that. Well, they used to take you to the gym almost every day and ride with you guys to all the towns. I, I, I don't know. Well, you know, they were just trying to lead us along there because uh, they're trying to come off being our friends when uh, secretly they were plotting our demise, I think, the whole time. But I tell you, Bobby secretly, Jaggers, huh? Bobby I think Capital, Jaggers, I right. think Capital Sports Promotions had something to do with the two, one. Hugo. There's uh, and Bobby. Here we Jag go with Capital Sports again. Well, Bobby Jaggers is. Uh, who is that referee? That's uh, he's Frenchy, Frenchy in Frenchy there. Ramos. Well, he couldn't. Ramos. Well, he's he a, certainly could be. He's the owner of French's gym in Brooklyn, New York. Well, he couldn't be any worse than Bikingo. So I guess as oh, far as referee goes, referee, it's a he's step licensed, up in the right direction. He's licensed by the New York State Athletic Commission, also by the New Jer Jersey State Athletic Commission, and he has a license to referee in Puerto Rico and all the other Caribbean you're, islands. You're right, that is Frenchy. I, I couldn't hardly recognize him with that shine coming off the top of that bold plate That's there. That's right, you know? the, the, the gleam there has kind of took my eyes off for a little bit. But here's Bobby Jaggers. Once again, I told you, go at the beginning of this match, the classic physique. I mean, think how many years, Brad, it took Jaggers to get the physique like that. Tell you what, Barry, a lot of intense training and a lot of uh, hard workouts from his home there in Dunlap, Kansas, to get him in the shape that he's in right now, which is peak condition. I, Whoa. I guess you have a comment on that. No, I'd rather just pass it. That's back. a good idea, Hugo, because there's two of us here. I know you were tough and you were a wrestler at one time, but you got the state of the art in tag team wrestling sitting right beside I you. So you better keep yourself in line. I don't want any trouble, boys. Well, if you Which just sit I there and be a, a good boy, that, and sit there and be a good boy, we might not take it out on you the next time on the pool table. There's Dan Crawford coming up with a big knee to the midsection and a couple of hard chops to the chest. And there it goes. A big reversal right there. Oh, oh, a big Mexican oh, belly. Big clothesline right there. What a good follow through big by Mexican. Hurricane Castillo. I tell you, I'll give a little credit here. A know? lot of I mean, credit is due here. No, a little credit. Oh, look at Jaggers. Oh, oh well, Jaggers. the bully in trouble. Look at that. Two against one, naturally. They uh, he's getting whipped. One. He is getting whipped. Well, now, now, see, Bobby Jaggers and Dan Crawford have got to kind of take a little breather right here and get their 
uh, well, they need more than a breather. Catch their wind and uh, get their faking back. And because uh, Miguelito Castillo are hitting them with two and one tactics, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's their typical way of doing things. They're hitting them with everything, and so far we have not seen a good counterattack by the Jayhawks. And Miguelito Castillo uh, came into the ring not being their favorite, so they well, have uh, so well, far. certainly not my favorite. You know, Hugo, there's... Uh, I, was, I was talking about uh, as far as uh, winning the match. Oh, oh, oh. Not uh, crowd-wise, not oh, fan-wise. Oh, oh, oh. well, there's a side headlock being administered by uh, Castillo Jr. right there on Dandy Dan Crawford. And uh, there's a tag. That's illegal. I can't yes. believe they actually made a legal move there. Oh, they always... Well, that's always uh, oh, what a move! Oh, there's a drop-down, oh. leapfrog, drop-down, leapfrog, big double hip toss. And uh, naturally, they stole that move from the sensational bat. Exactly plans, right, but, uh, Mark. They say imitation is the finest form of flattery, yes, Brad. Let me recall. Oh, you guys big double drop kick, too. For six years, they've been in wrestling for nine years. Well, that's well, only... Who, who is copying who? Let's hey, get some Ugo, statements here. Ugo, if you'll just put a clamp on it and let me explain to you that... The Sensational Bad Twins are the state-of-the-art tag team wrestling. I mean, can you, you got verify that? I've got. I can verify it, Brad. Aren't we the state-of-the-art in tag team well, Bart, wrestling? We're, we're the World Wrestling Council World Tag Team Champions. We've held belts everywhere we've ever been in our lives. In the part of professional wrestling goes, I think that speaks for itself. Well, Bobby Jaggers would approve of that verification. But once again, Dandy Dan Crawford trying to. Calm things down a little bit in the ring, and uh, I stole them from time here because they're getting whipped. What do you mean, stalling, Hugo? That's a great strategy right there. Just trying to get their win back and try to figure out where these guys are coming from. Because obviously the Barrio boys are so vain that they don't want to take a low chance kick, on low kick. Oh, it's a kick into the midsection, Hugo. Right in the bread basket, Hugo. Well, Come that's on, right. Call the match the way it is. You know, now if uh, you know if you hit one of them fat beer belly uh, truck oh. drivers there in the uh, well. There's just a little bit of bad uh, thinking there on the part of the Jayhawks. And what's the purpose of going over and uh, throwing a punch at Bobby Jaggers when he's outside on the apron? Hey, what's the... There's a lot of people out here that would like to oh, do there the it same. Is again. There they go double teaming again, too, Hugo. Now, how can you possibly condone that? Well, I'm not. I'm well, just there's saying a it was great. Standing vertical suplex. Uh, finally, Castillo brings... Dan Crawford down, crashing to the mat with the cover, but I guarantee you he's not going to get the, the well foot on the rope. See, you got to do what you have to do, particularly when your hair is on the line, as it is in this match. And a hot night in Bayamon, and it's going to get hotter if you don't start seeing things our way, Hugo. Oh, my goodness. Boy, I uh, starting to feel a lot of heat in here. There, see, he finally, he kicked, he finally kicked out, and... There's a side headlock, another legal tag. Uh, actually, I'm sweating already. Well, actually, I'm surprised they made a legal tag. There's a punch. See, a punch. The referee's not doing anything about that. He's letting them get away with everything. Okay, good move by Miguelito. Side headlock. He shoots him to the ropes. Oh, what a move here. He blocks them, and a couple of good hits by Miguelito. Oh, yes. Drive that gut. Drive that shoulder in. And look at Jaggers with the shoe baby whip. Hey, you said anything goes at the beginning of the match, Hugo. Okay, they, they were throwing yes. them into the scaffold. So Indeed. Why not pull shoe baby out and let it get a little damage in? You know? Whoa. Oh, there's that big shoulder tackle. Look like a Canadian football tackle. Hey, we've taken me. a few of those, and uh, I guarantee you, you see stars every time. He just explodes that on you. Looks like he's getting him up for a running power slam. Oh. oh. I, yeah. just, I just can't believe that a great athlete like Crawford had teamed up with uh, Bobby Jaggers. Well, you got two great athletes forming a great tag team. Juan and a bully in a corner. What do you mean a bully? Don't you realize Jaggers played football for Washington State University? He's played baseball. He's done everything, Hugo. He's a heck of an athlete. And don't you realize that he, he has hit... never come forward with any proofs on that, therefore... I, I, well, he, I, I, I hey, Hugo, he told, he told me that uh, after he got finished playing USC... He told me many things. ...that uh, O.J. Simpson's wife came up to him and said... Bobby Jaggers hit O.J. Hart and he ever been hit oh, in his what life. A move. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, Bobby Jaggers has never told a lie. Whoa. Wow. Well, there was an impressive move right there by Miguelito Perez to get a reverse on Dan Crawford. And uh, Miga, or, uh, Castillo Jr., what's he doing in oh, the they, ring? They, he has they, no business being threw, in the ring at all. They threw Castillo out. They threw Miguelito out. And referee did not see that. Well, that's because... Uh, Castillo was in the ring uh, distracting the referee. I mean, these guys are working against each other. You'd never see the state-of-the-art do something like that, Hugo. 
little bit of confusion here caused by the tactics of the Jayhawks. And Miguelito, it's hurt. Yeah, he's probably got a hangnail there on his big toe. He, and this could these guys can't take much pain. Are you kidding me? These boys are tough. You Tejo should know Hugo. that. Tough is You've sitting been around right beside you in the forms of the sensational Batten twins. And you ought to know that more than anything else because you felt it on the pool. Oh, oh I tell you, that uh, oh, my reverse uh, slam. I tell you, that's about as devastating a move as you're going to see in, in professional wrestling. And lucky for Miguelito Castillo came in. Yeah, they came in. Kick. Oh, for yeah, a save. Kick, kicked him. And okay, gentlemen, let's recall it. You said that everything goes here, so. Well, okay. It's legal, it's legal, right? Oh, what a kick. That was legal right there. Okay. Legal kick to the midsection, and uh, there's Bobby Jaggers dropping a big forearm across the throat of Miguelito Perez. And there's an elbow to the throat of Miguelito Perez. And Bobby Jaggers is doing what he does best, and that's taking total control of a match and using his forms of verification to Yeah, win. sure. He stays in the corner. He lets the athlete Crawford go in, take some punishment, and when he finally gets one down, then Jaggers comes in. He kicks some uh, uh, part of the bodies of Miguelito Castillo. When he gets tired, he tags out. I mean, I'm not too happy with that strategy because he hasn't shown the rest of the world what kind of shape he's in. Well, needless to say, we're talking about deep condition. Hey, here. look at him. He's in perfect shape. I mean, that's a perfectly toned athletic body right there. I'm not talking about Miguelito Perez either. There he, you well, know, Bobby Jaggers and Dan Crawford is a great combination, Hugo, because good forearm there by Dan Jaggers. Crawford. Yeah, he's, he's rocked him with those forearms. And oh, up. well, there's a double shoulder tackle, and both men went down. But, uh, you know, Bobby Jaggers and Dan Crawford have a good tag team because you got Crawford that does all the aerial stuff, and Bobby Jaggers is the brains of the outfit, and that's how they go. He's where just they are. a bully. Crawford is the athlete, and here we have a double tag here. Uh oh, and uh, Castillo Jr. is in the ring, and oh. it doesn't look like he's a very happy camper to me. Shooting Crawford in the rope. Oh, oh boy, was that a vicious clothesline line right there. It Ooh, had all the just power about behind took it. His hat off. Look out, high backdrop. Oh, high backdrop. Here Jaggers comes Jaggers. He Here that comes Miguelito also. Well, we got all four men in the ring right now, and it's just. Oh! Uh, well, there's a backdrop. Out goes Miguelito. Now just stay out there, Miguelito, so Jaggers and Crawford can take care of your okay. Barrio boy partner. Castillo there. now in a lot of trouble. That's uh, it, boys. So That's it, boys. takes place here by the Jayhawks. Watch out. Here it comes. Oh, big bear hug. Oh, they got him. This has got to be it right here. I can't wait to see Castillo, Miguelito, Get that Paul, count, referee. Oh, but here comes Miguelito. Hey, where's oh. the referee at? Do, uh, what was he doing over there, Rico? Uh, last second. stars or something? He's oh, probably, I don't. He's probably almost blinded by the, the sheen off his head. The, the almost a three school second. of referee. Oh, oh he's up on the out. middle rope. Oh, flying body press. But now oh. Jaggers comes in. Hey, okay, smart tag one, team wrestling. One uh, each then on that. Yeah, uh, okay, they're even. Well, I'll give them that. And there's, okay, uh, the exchange and some blows here. And another. Well, I think the over the top. out all the stops now, right into the mud. Of course, right we there. have to specify that the uh, disqualification of the top rope a rule was waived for this special challenge, hair versus hair match. Well, no, anything goes, Hugo, and that means you can throw a guy oh, over the block, top rope. Good block. Good block Crawford, by Dan Crawford. Castillo trying to oh. suplex it. There, he shook his legs. That's it. Took him off I'm balance. Oh, you. look at that. And it's a tremendous athlete. Hey, he makes a save right there. If he hadn't done that, those guys would have oh, good uh, kick by two Crawford. chrome domes. Big spinning kick by Crawford. Oh, there's a oh. small package by Hey, and Castillo, Jaggers, Jaggers comes Jaggers. right in. Hey, I tell you, these guys are pouring okay, out back and really forth, getting... back and forth. Something's going to happen here, Hugo. Oh, hey, I'm enjoying this because I know what the Barrio boys are going to look like here. with the bold headed oh, power. Oh, fascist power but slam. Here it comes, hey, Jaggers. Jaggers had to save it right there because that's uh, not too many oh, people yeah, get up they and were getting whipped. Know, they were slam. getting whipped, and you know it. Well, all four men okay, once again back in the ring. Oh. Crawford drops down. Here he comes. He leaps over him. Oh, he puts the brakes. Who's oh, no, I've never down. seen that move. Unbelievable. Three he seconds. had his foot on the rope or something. There's no way that could have happened like Come on, that. he had his tights, Hugo. You saw it right there. What? No the way. Ice. No way. Stop it. Hey. No way. Okay, we have TNT. We have. Now what are these two clowns doing in the ring? TNT is, time is a reject secure. from a Hari Carey movie or a we, Kung Fu movie. He should be on the we are gonna enjoy feature on Channel 13. We are going to enjoy the sight of seeing the Jayhawks 
Hey, this Get is a hair. travesty right here, Rugo Savinovich. Jose Hell demands tight for the one, two, three. The Barrio boys would be the ones getting that chrome dome. Uh, you got to remember, Brad, that uh, this match is a hot night in Bayamon, and Bayamon is in Puerto Rico, and they're going to make sure that they won the match regardless of what it took. Well, right, you, Ugo. you know you're right, wrong. Ugo. No, you, know you know you're wrong. Right. We saw it. The fans, hey, they got the BHS. They could play it back as many times as they wanted, and they're going to see what really happened. That's they right, were the shocked. Were pulled. I'm telling you what, Crawford and Jaggers never saw it coming, and they were surprised. And that win came, and it was a tremendous win for Miguel and Castillo. And those are the results there as Crawford and Jaggers are losing their hair, and we're finding out some surprises here. Their hey. roots are black. Well, their roots are black here, gentlemen. No comment on that, no Ugo. Comments. All I've got to say is... It started with blonde, shiny hair, and when it gets down to that, we see some black roots here. Well, you know, there's... Something that's going wrong here. Well, obviously, uh, okay, let's just tell the people they bleached their hair, Ugo, okay? They bleached their hair, and that's why their roots are black, and obviously it's going to show up when they get their hair cut off. But as far as the sensational Batten twins are concerned, it was a tremendous miscarriage of justice, and I can't wait till we get the Barrio boys in the ring because we're going to prove to them what tag team wrestling is all about, right, Brad? Yeah, that's right, Bart. Not only them, we're going to prove to everybody on this rock and everybody in the whole world that the Sensational Batten Twins, a crazy train of professional wrestling, are what it is in tag team wrestling today. We are the epitome of tag team wrestling. This well, is a lot of modesty on your part, gentlemen. I... Hey, Hugo, we just call spade a spade, you know? Whoa. Uh, I know our... in the ring, we are watching uh, Jaggers crying. Uh, like a big crybaby. This is, it, it, you know, these people at home. If if you got a chance, you, know, you fat beer belly guys, go ahead and get go up and get you a beer. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. This. Now you're looking you at don't my need belly. To see this. Now you're looking at my belly. I think now you're getting personal because well, no, I'm not I don't have time to work I'm out. I'm about beer. I Ugo. produce. I'm not talking about Cutty Sark, Perrier, and Twist the Lemon. Well, you should not be looking at. at okay, I do have a belly, but it's you know I'm I'm a busy man. I don't get that much sleep either. It's it's tough. We know okay. that's a fact. We have the Jayhawks crying. It's all over for them as the hot night in Bajamon came in to upset. Set ending for them. And the final result. Miscarriage of justice. Castillo and Miguelito, the winners. They, they're not through. They want to get some more. They, look at the Barrio boys. They've already won the match. They've cut the guy's hair. So Ooh, now they want to go out and try to beat them. What face on that Jaggers. Well, Boy, is he ugly. It's a face only a mother could love, Hugo. What can you say? Boy, he's a little bit more ugly than Rick St. James, that Jaggers. Well, we won't make any comments there. Okay, fans, the action continues, and it's getting hotter because we are going to be taking you into the big main event, the fire match. And it gets hotter. Okay, it's main event time as the fire match. It features Hercules Ayala against Carlos Colon. That's right, that's right, Hugo. Let me just go ahead and introduce this match. That's right, it's a fire match. Hercules Ayala against Carlos Colon. A fire match. A hot night in Bayamon. And you know, you people out there, you're not going to be able to smell the burning flesh. You're not going to be able to smell the singed tear. I know you're tired of Hugo Savanovich contaminating your mind. You had nothing to say. We got everything to say. A hot night in Bayamon, baby. Fire match. Hercules Ayala against Carlos Colon. You people out there have never seen anything like it before, have they, Brad? That's exactly right, Bart. So all you fat, beer-bellied truck drivers and rednecks out there, you sit back. Hey, get out of here, Hugo. I got the microphone now. Sit back in your chair, <laughs> pop the top on that beer, and try to keep your buck tooth wife out of, under control from the sight and sound of sensational Batten twins. And sit back and see something you've never seen before. And that's a fire match brought to you by E&J Productions. That's right. So you rednecks out there, get ready for the match of your life because you're never going to see anything else like this. Only the World Wrestling Council and the Capital Sports Promotion and E&G Productions bring you a fire match like this. And only those people there involved can give you the commentary of the sensational Batten twins you just ignore apart. this guy back here he because he doesn't nothing. know what's going on just sit Stars back and listen right to the sensational here, bat twins. shut up ugo listen to the sensational <laughs> bat twins because we'll never steer you wrong we'll never steer you wrong we're going to make sure That's that this is a hot way. night and if you can't interrupt this like
Here we go, the main event of Anniversary 88, a hot mic in Bayamon, and how much hotter can you get than a fire match, Brad? You can't get any hotter than that, Bart. And it just goes to show what we were talking about earlier in the tape, that down here in the World Wrestling Council, you have your barbed wire matches and your cage matches, and now uh, for the first time, or maybe not the first time, but the only place in the world it's going to happen is a fire match. And let's describe to the fans right now the origin of this match and the inventor. And will you believe it that it was a guy named El Bikingo? Well, it could only take somebody with his kind of mentality to come America. up with. Well, with it, like I said, it would go, only somebody with his kind of mentality could come up with the uh, situation like this, a match like this, Ricky Vargas in the ring, and just look at that fire burning around these guys. I've got to give credit to Carlos Colon, even though I hate to do that, and credit to Hercules Ayala. It takes a lot of guts to get into a ring that's surrounded by fire like that. Oh, very generous on your part. Oh, I mean, look at that. That fire has to burn every time you hit those and what about the what about the temperature inside there? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, well, it was a hot night in Bayamon that night anyway, in September the 10th, but when you add the temperature from that fire that's going around that ring I mean I tell you it's just like uh, being in an inferno and both men hating each other and uh, they were ready for this battle well you know the situation to set this match up Ugo uh, just to inform the people a little a bit was a uh, dangerous one. yeah it was it was uh, we had a there was an award the ceremony Council awards yeah World Wrestling Council award ceremony and uh, Carlos Colon got an award that uh, Hercules best wrestler of, of the, the year, year. And Hercules Ayala felt that he should have got that award, and Carlos brought his wife up. A very emotional scene, and Hercules Ayala came up and actually knocked Carlos down, and he slapped her. And I mean, anytime you slap somebody's wife, then you just well, ask see, for trouble. Here's where you're wrong, because there was never a slap. He, he, she was pushed down to the to the floor, but there was no slap there. Well. You saw what you saw, and I saw what I saw. But regardless, he laid his hands on Carlos's wife, and you just don't do that. Okay, getting back into this fire match, Hercules Ayala. The action's getting oh, hotter and hotter, Hugo. He's got something in his hands right now. I'll tell you, oh. I, I, probably his fist, Hugo. I, I didn't see anything else. Looks like a can or something. Well, once again, you got the... Uh, don't say a beer can, it's a soda can. Well, I, Hey, I wasn't going to say anything, Hugo. I was just going to say that uh, every now and then these people down here in Puerto Rico get a little carried away and throw anything they well, can get their hands on into the ring. We have improved 80% uh, on that situation. You know, tempers uh, get a little bit carried away sometimes. Oh, look, look, oh, oh look at James. That hair is burning. Is hair. I tell you what, Hugo, this is uh, the people out there have never seen anything like this, and this is the first time I've actually seen the match. And uh, what's to say that uh, his whole hair, head of hair just won't go up in flames, you know? Yes, they're, they're, they do have fire extinguishers on the outside in case the wrestler uh, gives up or surrenders. They bring in the fire extinguishers in. Well, I tell you, it's... Uh, uh, I tell you, I'm just really overwhelmed by this particular situation. Like I told you, I've never seen a match like this, and I know I would never personally step into a ring surrounded by fire because uh, I have too much concern for my bodily health. Okay, Hercules Ayala showing off his strength as he is dominating all over Carlos Colon, and we have pointed out oh, a big hot right rivalry hand. going on here. It's more than just a match, more than the fire, the desire to destroy each other. Well, you know, Carlos Colon's given up a lot of height and weight and strength here, but just, uh, you know, he's got desire, he's got, uh, he's so motivated, he's so fired up that uh, it doesn't make any difference to him what kind of match this would have been. I think if he'd have saw Hercules out on the street, uh -oh. just... there's a patented Puerto Rican uh, low blow there, Hugo. Yes, it was uh, indeed the trademark of, of Carlos Colon. He does have that down to well, where he's fast. Well, personally, Hugo, I don't think that's an admirable trait. I don't no, know how I, you I, feel about it. I do it. agree with you. I, I'm the one that's, uh, it's, I've been asking a lot of the World Wrestling Council officials that they should have more fines. Oh, you're going to ask El Kingo to go out there and yeah. no, not, no, a not fine. Right, right. I was right. Uh, referring like to the commissioner heading T. Joseph to the vice president, Joe Pedicino, because I do believe that we should uh, be a little bit more uh, looking into this. A violation. Oh, of the, I tell you, did you see that Carlos Colon just jamming that fire right in the face of Hercules Ayala. And I guess if you got a score to settle with somebody, this is the kind of match you want to do. He's already busted Hercules' head wide open with uh, punches and head butts, and Carlos Colon does have a hard hit. Okay, check this out. 
to A. He's getting... Ayala, a bloody mess right now. And there's, he's getting burnt. I tell you, there's old the fire. Uh, Fast Eddie down there trying to get his pictures. Uh, Fast Eddie has always been known to be around any kind of hot situation, Hugo. Yes, uh, he does. And we definitely had a hot situation. Anniversary 88 in Bayamon. It was a hot night in Bayamon, and, and this is what the people uh, came to see. The yes, main event. Big main event. It. Hey, I don't think that people have been disappointed at all, and I know the people at home watching this tape aren't disappointed at all because they're not going to see a match like this on any other tape. The only way they're going to see it is ENG Productions, World Wrestling Council promotion. This tape here, fire match, hot night in Bayamon. I mean, you're not going to see it anywhere. It is hot. It is hot. Oh, oh good move by Ayala right there, using his smarts. Carlos Colon's a smart man, but Hercules outsmarted him, Ugo. Well, he's got that. And that is the name of the game. To all smart your opponent, go for the win. And in this case, more than a win, we're talking about destruction here. That could leave some awful marks on their bodies with that fire well, so close around him. There's Hercules Ayala going. Oh, oh I know oh, that had to burn oh. his arm right there, Hugo. Hercules Ayala kicking after the leg of Carlos Colon, trying to weaken that knee because Carlos Colon's best move, probably the best figure four leg lock in the sport of professional wrestling. But Hercules Ayala doesn't have a bad one. Yeah, either. he has the inverted, yes, inverted he, he figure four. He has the four. inverted figure four leg lock, and he's trying to weaken Carlos's leg right here so he can maybe strap that figure four on him and end the match. There he is just And at away. this time, the whole Coliseum, Ruben Rodriguez and the Lubio Stadium next door, when they were watching it in the big screen, it was a madhouse. The people were just uh, insane as they could not believe all that fire and all the intensity of the buff uh, wrestlers in the ring. Well, you can see the in the background there, they're standing on their feet. They're excited. They've never seen a match like this. I don't know too many people have seen a match like this. I was ready to bite my nails. I'll I'm tell you what, it was, a, it was a great block there by Carlos because Hercules tried to get him in that inverted figure four lock leg lock and uh, Carlos just happened to uh, almost cradle him out. Oh, oh, look out. Oh, look at how close that flame is. Right to his face. arm. I tell you, it's to its face I now. I believe he's got a little inflammation there in his arm. Ugo. Yes. I tell you, look at that. He's trying Couple to set his hair on fire. I tell you, there's no love loss, obviously, between these two wrestlers. Once that again, is right. Carlos attempting to fight back here and big Hercules all over Carlos Colon. No title involved as the World Wrestling Conference oh. for this match has stripped Hercules of the Universal Championship, but it was honor and pride and a lot of guts involved to get even in the part of Carlos and Ayala to destroy Carlos Colon. Oh, I tell you, there it is. He's uh, finally got that figure for Oh, reversal Carlos here. Just turned it right back over and reversed it on him. I tell you, this could be it right here. Are we talking about some heavy artillery here in the part of Cologne as he oh. almost had him. Well, Ayala was smart. He went right to the ropes, grabbed the ropes, so he has to break the oh, figure four block. hold. Picks him up. Oh, oh, I tell you, that uh, knee drop right there. Oh, I tell you. I give Carlos Cologne credit. He's strong. He's tough. He might be maybe the best that there is. He's got the know-how. But I have a, he's been there before. Yeah, but I have a feeling one of these days he's going to meet with the sensational Batten twins, and we're going to show him exactly how great we are. Boy, aren't we looking for some trouble with everybody tonight? Well, Hugo, you know, sometimes you just got to call them as you like, see Some like people like to live dangerously, and I'll see it's going to be some tough uh, outings for you guys in the future. Well, I tell you what, I, I would look forward to getting in the ring with Carlos Colon because uh, when you get in the ring with a wrestler of his caliber who's wrestled all the top guys in the world. Okay, and let's get back to the action here as Ayala is screaming in pain, holding on from the pants of the referee. He's ready to give up here, but he's fighting it hard. Ricky, Vic, Ricky Vargas Benitez is asking Hercules if he wants to give up. I'm telling you, there's too much pride on the line here. Uh, he's not going to give up unless he gets knocked out or, or more seriously injured. These two guys are okay. going to go at it. Referee is very concerned. Ayala is not giving up, but at this particular moment, it looks like it's going to be all over for Ayala. I tell you, the knee he cannot joint. stand the pain any longer. The knee joint can't take that. Okay, and it's all it over. Is. There it is and right there. This was the end of the hot, hot night in Bayamon. But it wasn't quite over yet because Carlos Colon wanted to put more pain, more destruction on the man that had really offended his wife and his people and Ayala in a lot of pain, it was officially all over. 
but Carlos wanted more. I tell you, you know, Carlos, uh, you can't really blame a guy for doing this because, like you said, Hugo, Puerto Ricans have a lot of pride. Family is very important to them, and he feels like he didn't get quite enough punishment in. He's just going to get a little bit Okay, more. win was not enough. He, it's all over. The, the referee, now he wants the referee out of the picture. He wants to do more damage on Hercules Ayala. The main event came down to a close, and the fire extinguishers were brought in. And there was a bloody, bloody mess on Hercules Ayala. And it was all over for him, but Carlos. There he is going after him again, Hugo. Uh, I realize Look out. A, a, a lot of pride and uh, uh, slap the man's wife around. But, you know, there's, this a, is uncalled for. There, there's a time where you got to stop it. The match is over. He won the match. I mean, what else does he want to do? He beat the guy. He wanted to break both legs on Ayala. That's what he wanted. I had a chance to interview him after this particular match. And believe me, the intentions on Ayala were the same. Unfortunately for him, Carlos Colon secured a figure four leg like there was no escape for Ayala. And big anniversary kick came hard to an ending on Ayala. A bloody mess defeated by Carlos Colon. Well, fortunately for me, we have come to an ending of this hot night in Bali Amman, and I think it was hotter in here, and uh, I hope you buy a, a lot more tapes from Eddie Grice, but I think I'm going to wind up in the hospital. What do you guys think about the hair versus hair match, uh, Miguelino Castillo against the Jayhawks? Uh, the Barrio boys lucked out again, but you know, it doesn't make any difference, because I know we're going to meet them down the line. They're going to run into the state-of-the-art of tag team wrestling, whether you like it, whether the people out there like it. There's one thing you can always count on, and Anytime you see ENG Productions, World Wrestling Council, Capital Sports Promotion, you're seeing the best in professional wrestling. You're seeing the stars right here. In this case, it's the Sensational Baton Twins, and there's nothing else there is to be said about.